what is up everybody my name is vino welcome to the vino's void um i've got one of my favorite human beings here miss gabriella warren um this is a new podcast so we're going to be starting with probably one of our very first guests on the show mm. so go ahead and introduce yourself hi um i'm gab it's like it can be cool whatever i'm gabriella <laughs> um i am a singer songwriter and a poet um my pen name is gk I have a book out called From My Heart to Yours. It's available on Barnes and Nobles and Amazon. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Sweet. And then sweet. I have a song out with DJ Symphony, official DJ of Wu Tang Clan. Ooh. Well, for Jizza of Wu Tang Clan, it's called It's Bigger Than Music and it's a banging song. And you can check it out if Everybody you want to. Go check that out. Please check it out. <laughs> So sweet, Gabby. Um, <clears throat> how did we meet? We met. Oh my God. At the Christmas, wherever you introduced Ryan to Jason. I d we talked. I always forget we talked. Yeah. I think I was just no. You told me I was just like that's rad, dude. Yeah, I think because <laughs> oh, my I my dad mentioned that like I made beats. This was yeah. like in my freshman year when I didn't even do anything, and I was a junior, I think. Yeah. Dang, that's wild to think about. Wow. But yeah, I'm so we met way back old. then. Um, <clears throat> you were always friends with my sister, Ryan. That's mm -hmm. how she was introduced to Jason. Yeah. And then it wasn't until, what, probably like six months ago that we really started like... I remember it. No, I, okay, so I didn't know Ryan. Rem you, you remember Nani, right? Yeah, yeah. She introduced uh, Ryan to me and then like at that Christmas event, I met you and then I met your mom. Then I talked to Ryan, but then it was... Oh my God. Oh, wait, no. So it was like, yeah, you're right. Six months ago then. So it was that. Wow. And it was when it was the Girls Against Abuse um, performance. Oh, you're right. Where, yeah. like, we all went to Yard House and I was like, hey. <laughs> yeah, we just kicked it at Yard House and just talked about <laughs> Yeah, we were bullshit. talking about for shit. Yeah. But then it was like sometime in, God, what month was it? I think it was like August or July where I like came over and then we made the one song. Yeah. I don't know if I can say the name came yet. In, <laughs> came into the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that's pretty much how it started. It was just, we had the, cause we had built the studio uh, and we started uh -huh. to get new artists in here mm -hmm. and <laughs> the mom mug. <laughs> she always has the mom mug it's in the so studio. Big. Massive it's so mug. God, imagine if it, this was like out of context, we just like cut that part out. We're just like, it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the massive mug. But yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> where did you find your first passion for music and how did it kind of develop throughout your life? Um, I had a CD player when I was in fifth grade and everyone had like the iPhone 5C. Mm, so it was really, yeah. it was like, so I wrote, okay, I wanted an iPhone 5C, but my mom's like, yeah, we'll get it for you. And she just ended up getting me a CD player. And I was like, okay, this is great. Thanks, mom. <laughs> and my dad's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so I then, um, I, it had, it was so funny as it had like the wraparound headphones. So it had oh, like the yeah. wire in Almost the back. Almost like a Walkman headset. <laughs> yeah. Now I was giving it so much shit at 12. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> now I'm like, I kind of wish I kept it. Right. But, um, <clears throat> so I like. I think I went to I got it from Walmart. <laughs> really? And then, yeah, Walmart was pretty. Yeah, they had some cool shit. Walmart was a shit back then. Yeah, I could get a Nintendo from there for like dude. It's like fifty dollars, and now it's like I don't was, know where to find it. Your mom goes shopping, you just run through the toy aisle. I'm like, come on, just going come crazy, on. dude. Yeah. Anyway, I got it. Anyway, yeah. So I bought. I already had like Justin Bieber believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I listened to that um album a lot, and then. It was 21 by Adele, where oh, I was like, okay. I would listen to it on repeat. And I realized, like, I would really get into the song. Like, I would sing along with whatever song was playing from the album. And I was like, wow, I really like doing that. I really mm, like singing. Yeah. So then I didn't think, I didn't, like, put too much thought into it up until I realized how I'd get into it. So, like... Like, mm, okay. I listened to Turning Tables. Like, that was, like, one of my favorite songs from that album. And I'd be listening to it, and then I'd be singing. It's like, I would really be feeling that song. And I was, like, 12, and oh, I had no, yeah. nothing of that sort of experience that that song was talking about. And I was like, this feels, this feels really nice. I don't know. Mm. It felt, like, it felt therapeutic. 
So then I was listening to that album a lot and I realized I really liked singing. And at the time I was in track. So my mom thought oh, okay. I was going to be like this little track athlete. And I was like, <laughs> no. So I then just I was like, mom, I don't want to. Be, I don't want to be in track anymore. All we do is run. And I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. The track meets are long as fuck. And I was like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So then um, I just was like, I, I want to sing. And she's like, you want to sing? I'm like, yeah. So then I got like a vocal coach and I started with her for like, from when I was 12 to I think like 15, 16. Nice, nice. Vivian Gaines, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Plug. Shout out. Um, <laughs> so I was doing vocal lessons for a few years and then she was pregnant and she goes i'm gonna be raising my kids essentially yeah. and i'm like yes About to be no mom. worries yeah i was like that's gonna that's gonna be a while so then she goes i could recommend you to another vocal coach or i could i'm going on a tangent can i continue no you're good I? of okay, course cool. yeah, i was like oh shit i'm rambling yeah you're good but um then she's like, you could either go to another vocal coach or I could recommend you to someone else. So mm -hmm. that's like, I was recommended to Jason Bronner, producer. Oh, yeah. that's how you met Jason. Yeah, okay. that's how I met Jason. So she sent a video of me performing Turning Tables. And he goes, okay, well, I'll audition her at the studio. And so it was where I started to really get into singing then. Because mm. it, I felt like from like, <clears throat> like at 12... And up into those years, I was, like, writing songs, but not really. They were horrible. Like, they weren't good. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But I didn't really think of how long I wanted to sing or whether I would stick to it. I just knew I liked it. Yeah, and you just did it at the time. Yeah. It was just... Oh, wait, no, I wasn't 16. I was 14. Okay. I lied. Sorry. Younger, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when, I was, <laughs> when I was 14, that's when I was, like... No, I really, really like this. Mm, so yeah, yeah, I guess that's like a long version of when. Mm. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so great. how how do you feel that your career has developed <clears throat> since the point of when you realize like, okay, this yeah. is what I wanted to do. And how did you kind of tackle it? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, how do you go through the process, at least mentally of being like, okay, well, mm -hmm. I know I want to do this. Yep. It's not what everybody does, but yeah. I'm going to make it happen. <clears throat> Yeah, so, um, I didn't really experience any sort of pushback, if, if that's, like, the right word to use, mm, like, mm -hmm. oh, well, maybe you should think about this, and maybe you should think about that, um, I was always encouraged, and I had a lot of support to do mm. what I wanted to do, yeah. so it's, like, I know my mom was, like, a track runner in high school, and she loved it, and she's, like, you're so athletic, like, you could have gotten a scholarship, yeah. she goes, but it's what you want to do, and my dad's, like, well, can she actually sing, and I was, like, yes, dad, <laughs> yeah. so they were, like, okay, well, let's just start here, start with, like, mm -hmm. vocalizing and stuff, vocal lessons, yeah. so I'd say from that to now so i've been i guess i can say professionally singing or yeah. like starting my since i was 14 nice now I'm 20. nice shit that's a <laughs> lot of progress that's six years is it is my math right yeah six seven eight nine ten yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah six years that's a lot of progress no man that's an, and there's been so much growth mm, i mean mm -hmm. i'd like i'd experience just like moments of where i was moments of stagnation i hope that's yeah the no, right word sense. yeah okay thank god yeah i'm like yeah i'm a, poet, a plateau but, like, for a bit and yeah. then <clears throat> i always like give myself shit for not saying words right no, anyways that's good. like besides the point um so i'd say god now i lost my train of thought <laughs> stagnation thank and then you your, your so progress i'd say that was like the only thing that was annoying and i guess like a bit stifling because mm -hmm. I'd say recently, maybe when I was 18, where I felt like so now it was picking up, it was picking up momentum at that time mm -hmm. because of songwriting. I was uh. like, I started learning how to write songs when I was like 15. It was like Jason did like the artist development program. Yeah, I think yeah, Ryan yeah. Through, yeah, she right? definitely yeah. did that. So I had all the information, I had all the tools, I had my notes, but I was, I didn't believe that I was a good enough songwriter. So, I know exactly yeah. <laughs> what you're talking about. I was like, well, I, I feel this, and then, like, I've experienced that, but am I, like, am I good enough to yeah, write about it? Uh -huh. So that was, like, where 
I'd stick to like doing covers because I was like, oh, I can't write shit. And I was like, I can write poems, but I can't write a song. Mm. I didn't believe in myself. You had all like the self-doubt in your head yeah, of whether or not you could like, actually fulfill your potential. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I can't do it. But uh. I'd say at 18, no, 17, 18 is where I was like, all right, let me write a poem in the best, like, let me write a poem. And then I'm going to turn this into like song lyrics. And Jason oh, okay. helped with yeah, that. Yeah. So if I hope this makes sense, I don't know. But after that, and after like le- writing more on my own, writing terrible songs or writing songs that have good lines in it, and then using those lines and then rewriting yeah, it, just like pinpointing. really, yeah, like it helped my, I guess, confidence in that. And then mm. I don't know something about me finally believing that I could write, just like, okay, let's go. Like something yeah. accelerated that. So do you think it was specifically that one poem that kind of got you over that hump? Or was it kind of a micro process of realizing like, oh wait, like I, this is really good here. This is really good here. Like I can do this. I just got to figure out how to do it correctly. It's that. It was like, okay, I have, I started like, okay, I know I can't like jump in fully write a full song i could use lines from my poetry and then use that as song lyrics Mm. and jason would help me dissect because what i do is i'd write a like what i sometimes do it's like he would have me write multiple verses and from these verses he would pick lines that were really Uh, good and like multiple drafts yeah okay and then he would find the hook and then that would be the chorus or that would be this the title Mm, of the mm -hmm. song so I started to watch him do that for me and then I started to do it on my own Uh and then I would listen to like my favorite songs and look at the song structure because you're taught like oh a b a b or something like that and I was like when I finally got comfortable with songwriting I would follow that structure but then I felt like that was that kind of you I can you can do that for so long and then you I stopped again and I was like constricting yeah and I was like I don't want to feel like I have to follow a process yeah so I didn't and so something about like following the rules for a little bit and then okay let me just do my own thing yeah that accelerated something as well and then I think performing as well getting these certain opportunities Mm mm-hmm being recognized or like hey you have a good voice like you want to sing for this i'd be like yeah sure so it's like no not yeah sure i'd be like i'd be delighted yeah (laughs) so it's like these performances also like really did help my Mm -hmm. career also it's just like i don't know just growing through performing growing through songwriting Mm. all of that like did something i really don't know how to describe that something but it's like this force it's like an energy where Mm. you're like I, something's coming or like I'm gonna it's slowly building <laughs> like it's drive I, yeah and then mm. like maybe like who you are as like a songwriter or an artist wow, I guess I see. I so it, it really is like a process to find yourself as an artist mm-hmm. and to be able to get because that's one thing that I've noticed too is like I will learn a lot of things I'll study a lot like say videography yeah. and I'll study all this stuff but then because I don't have a formal education on it and I don't have a degree that says that I can do Dude, it that's I'm like exactly me I don't know how to do it even though I do I just need to go through the process of doing it multiple times over and sifting through and realizing this is the process of how I need to do it no correctly. That, is so, <laughs> that is okay that okay now that you brought that up that was also a big part of mm. like those that's those stagnant periods that I had. I think it was, it was like you go on your own and then you learn on your own, but you don't yeah. have that formal education or like mm-hmm. that formal sort of knowledge. Something that says that you can do it. Oh, you can. It's like Just, credi- you're yeah, credible. You're credible enough you to, to do it. to be able to do it properly. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my God. That's, a, oh. that's exactly it. And that's what I was like. Okay. Well, it's like, will I be taken seriously if I don't do this mm. or if I don't do it the formal route? Yeah. And it, honestly, what also helped my, like how I've developed as an artist and a songwriter is you know what? It's like those people who have that formal sort of education, that formal sort of like background on like songwriting or like production. It's like freaking, I feel like I have dog hair all over me. Probably don't. Um, It's like, that's, it's great to learn from them as well because they're learning like the basis of everything. And like, yeah, like the fundamental theory of how to do it correctly. Exactly. But then I feel like 
that was also like, oh, maybe I should have gone that route, or maybe I should have stuck to this, maybe mm-hmm. I should have stuck to that. And then it was also, okay, well, I can't keep comparing my career and my process to other people's because that's so specific to them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then what got me out of like, oh, shit, maybe I should have done what they were doing. It was like what you said, I'm doing multiple things. Well, it's like you do it multiple times to learn how you it works for you yeah exactly specifically yeah so it was like i learned from everybody who had that formal education and that sort of um kind of like fundamental yeah, understanding of yeah. music you're like a thesaurus i'm like Gavin <laughs> has the word for it <laughs> and then i was like okay cool well i will take from that and then i'm gonna see what i feel yeah is right. exactly so it's very honestly that development from when I was 14 to now, it's that intuitive sort of, okay, I know you're telling me to do this and you want me to sound like this. You want me to sound mm-hmm. like that, but I know what I want to sound like. Yeah, I'm comfortable here. Yeah. It kind of like in it's, some, in yeah. a very cliche, it reminds me of like an anime where, uh-huh. like a fighting anime where mm-hmm. everybody knows how to fight in this combat style, but then you have your one specific way yeah. of like your specific technique and you it's understand. It's like your trademark technique. Yeah, like you understand <laughs> yeah. how to take it your way. Because that's really what I see all of these creative processes as. Mm-hmm. Like with music, obviously there's basic theory, but once yeah. you learn that, it's like the sky what... is the limit. You yeah, manipulate dude. it in your own fashion. <clears throat> yeah. And that's like with song, like the structure of a song as well. Mm-hmm. Like I was taught that you can do A, B, A, B, or B, A, and like you can switch it around. But I'm like, what I've noticed, it's like listening to different artists and these specific songs that I listen to. That like, you listen to. That I, yeah, mm-hmm. that the artists that I resonate with. It's yes, like everything yes. that I do, I have to resonate with it. Because if mm-hmm. I don't, then I'm like, I it's will not, not sing this for you. Yeah. Like, there are so many songs that I wrote that I'm like, oh my God, I feel so much for it. And then it's sound was so, was not me. Mm. And I felt like I had to be, okay, like, hang on. All right, so like, let me talk about like song structure. So many songs that I've listened to, they have structure and then they don't as well. Like some songs, like they have one set of lyrics here, another set here, and then they do a refrain and then it's like an outro. Okay. And then, but you get this, you you hear the song itself it's like the artist is telling their story in that specific way and it's like you yes, got you got the point yeah. you didn't need something complex you didn't need you didn't, all the fluff you, no, like you got they straight were just to the like, point this is what happened i'm going to sing about it mm-hmm. and like they and i've also like noticed a lot of other songs that i've listened to it's like poems kind of or it's like the writer I don't know, man. It's like the artist has a poem and they put a melody to it and that's the song. And I was yeah. like, fuck, that's what I want to do. Yeah. But then it was like, God, what was I talking about after that? Like sound. Oh, shit. Like how the sound matches to what Oh, right. Resonating. Wrote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's like a big part too. It oh, had, I yeah. remember. Yeah. Because it's like, you feel like, I felt like for the longest time, it's like so much felt like a setback but then i was like okay i could either just go this way or i could actually just try and pave my own way Mm. so it was like i make a lot of slower music just because that music i feel resonates with me most but then a lot of people are affected by it Mm. where they're like no like the way you sing or the way you write or the sound we've we haven't heard that and they were like it's it's different. It's and you. Yeah, man. And I was like, and I would kind of fight with myself and then fight with like other people that I was writing yeah. with. And I was <laughs> like, I, everyone's like, you need to make something more upbeat. You need to make this, you need to make that. And I was like, eventually I will. Yeah. But it's like, I know I will and I want to, but I am resonating with something that's a lot deeper mm-hmm. and it's slower. Oh, yeah. I don't know, it man. It all has to align in a specific way. Because, yeah. like, a lot of people say, it's like, you need to make a happy song. It's like, well, I'm fuck, like... I'm not happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> Most like, of the shit. shit I write is because I'm sad. <laughs> exactly. Or I'm heartbroken. No, literally. Okay. <laughs> like, no. I don't know, man. It's like, when I listen to, like, upbeat music, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. And I'm like, this is great. But there's something about those that slower... It's like slow core kind of. Yeah. It people listen to it and they're like, I've literally felt this before. And I'm like, that's all I'm trying to do. Yes. I'm just trying to make you feel. Because 
And the best way that I can make people feel is if I go as deep as I can, not be surface level, and just be like, eh, eh, like just the, raw. The marrow. Okay, so literal this, marrow. The way this makes sense to me. So my piano teacher David, mm -hmm. glorious man, and the way that he teaches me music is I love so. David. I love David him is too. Rad. Dude, I love that man. He's so cool, but he <laughs> teaches me so open ended. Yeah. And the way he described major and minor, just in general to me especially with chord progressions and like mm -hmm. this kind of relates because minor is very sad major is very happy i love a minor scale how he describes it is like there's only one type of happy there's only one way you can feel happy or excited but there are a million ways you can feel sad and that's the same thing with major and minor so when you're making mm -hmm. progressions that resonate at a more you know a minor I don't know, have that type of feel, mm -hmm. that's where you can reach somebody because you reach a specific feeling that they felt at a specific time rather yeah. than just like, yeah, like Joy. I'm happy, I'm excited because <laughs> like there's Jubilant. only one way to, to feel that. So yeah. like when you explain that Whoa. to me, it made a lot of sense. That, wow. Okay, that makes so much sense. It's like even when I'm happy, it's slow. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I, you know, it's like, the major scale, it's a lot lighter, it's more uplifting, and it's mm -hmm. more like, <laughs> yeah. I really don't know. It's a, you hear the difference between the major and the minor, mm -hmm. but even when I'm not sad or like, oh my God, or it's like, if I'm writing a song about falling for someone or just like feeling a specific feeling or it was, I don't know, like observing something, mm -hmm. it could be like a very positive experience. I use the minor. Yeah. Or I use... Like, I sometimes use the major, but it's a lot slower because it's mm. like when it's an upbeat song, it's like, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. and it's like, it's great. Like you dance, you do. Woo. I don't yeah. know, man. I don't no, know. I know exactly what you're it's saying. It's high energy, but sometimes these happier sort of experiences or these more romantic experiences <laughs> or intimate experiences, it's like, it's slow. You it's know what I mean? It's a lot more intricate than just, yeah. ah, happy. Like, it's like, imagine like you're talking to someone that you're really, that you really like. And it's, it's like exciting to be around them and you really like them and you're like, oh my God, like, uh, you're, like you're <laughs> yeah. so, you're everything I want. It, but it's not like it's sunshine and it's like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. when, when you're talking it's confusing to them, almost. Yeah, yeah. when you're talking to them, it's so quiet. It's just you and that person. Mm. And that can either be like, and that's like a happy, for me, it's like me talking to a guy that I really like. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm excited and I'm like very upbeat, but it's like in that conversation, it's slower uh. and it's more intimate. It's like me and this dude, like we're just talking mm. and that's a happy experience. And I, I guess like I try, I use though the minor scale and like slower songs to explain that moment if that makes sense yeah no i know exactly what I you know. mean i mean it makes sense a lot of <laughs> like there's only obviously one major scale and then there's minor harmonic yeah. minor melodic minor like there's so much more complexity that you can work with i need to study this i have i'm like harmonic <laughs> it's cool bro like yeah, especially I need to. having it broken down by my piano teacher like it really shows you like dude how there's much? so much to work with here. I know. Because, yeah, that too. It's like sometimes when I, yeah, it's just a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. And you can, and when you know what to work with, you're like, oh my God, I can create anything. It just flows. It's exciting. It's so great. Yeah. It's like mainstream music uses a lot of like sunshine. And yeah. Sunshine. And then I'm yeah. like, can we talk about something else? Can we talk about something real? Yeah. Like, like Jason said one thing where he's like, you can make, there's so many songs. You can, I don't know, I forgot how he said it, but it's like, you can make multiple songs that talk about love, if that makes sense, but you can do it in like a different way. I thought that moved on its own. I was like, no, <laughs> no you're good. I'm like, that crystal moved it. Yeah, but, get this uh, in place right there. Hell yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's all. That yeah. was like a long tangent. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so. I'm so pumped on caffeine. Let's see, let's see. <clears throat> if you don't mind, could you explain mm -hmm. how the you performing for the jizza how how this story oh unfolded because it is quite a legendary story it's a legendary story i'm a legend at 20 i'm kidding <laughs> um that okay this story it's just so funny but it's like okay it's so 
I don't like, I don't believe, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. And mm-hmm. I'm like, there's a higher energy that's like, there's something guiding our path. Oh, yeah. for sure. And it's like, that's it. That's exactly what it that was. That was one of those moments. Yeah, man. Mm. So, okay. We, where was I? What month was this? I think I was like, I'm trying to remember what month. Was it a month before? It might have been in early June or mid June or like early July of this, of s- summer 2022. Okay. Thank God. Wow. Um, so I think we had just gotten back from, okay, hang on. I really need to think about it. Where was I? Did I go? I don't remember. No, just kidding. Um, so either in June or July, I could be so wrong. We, oh wait, no, (laughs) I think it was May. We had a trip to go on and I think I met symphony before the trip so okay my mom's sister and i went to oceanside and it's just like to get out of the house Mm -hmm. and we went and there was this night market going on and they hold like this night market i think on thursdays or something okay and we were just walking around like my sister was buying clothes my mom i don't i forgot what i was doing i was just like yeah whatever (laughs) and they had like this we, so it's like we come like this way and then we come around and then my mom notices like a Wu-Tang. Um, God, that's so crazy. <laughs> a Wu-Tang tent. And she was like, oh, oh shit. Like a little pop-up and, shop? Yeah. And she's like, oh, cool. They're selling Wu-Tang merch. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I was and like, yeah, it was cool. So we all go around and then there's like a poster kind of or like a cardboard cutout of DJ Symphony. <laughs> And um, it was like DJ Symphony official DJ for Jizza Wu Tang Clan. Oh, okay. And I think my mom had recognized him because I think she would watch like performances of Jizza or something. Oh, or she okay. like she was familiar with DJ Symphony's face. And she's yeah, like, okay. <laughs> and so she saw that and she's like, oh, that's cool. And then she noticed he was selling the merch with like another girl next to him. And uh. she was like, oh shit. She's like, that's kind of cool. She's like, that's the DJ. And at first, like, she goes, oh, wait, that's actually really fucking cool. So, like, we kind of, we go up to the booth, and then she looked at Symphony, and she was like, are you? And he's like, yeah, I am, I am the, I forgot what he said, but he was like, yeah, I'm the official DJ, I'm, I'm just his yeah. DJ. And I was like, that's sick. <laughs> so, I, the whole time, I was just watching everybody interact, because I was like, hey. Yeah, I don't know, like. there, yeah. Yeah, I, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I don't know, like, I was a little awkward. I was just like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. But so, like, my mom and him got to talking, and my sister's like, that's cool as fuck because she's like, Wu Tang merch is so sick. They started, they relate, my mom and Symphony related to each other because they were both from New York. Oh, uh, okay. And my mom's like, oh shit, she's like, I'm from Queens. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And like, they were talking and stuff. And then my mom's who, like, she's like the biggest plugger. She's like, my daughter sings. And I was like, <laughs> I do. Sorry. And then my mom's like, what baby network? And I was like, (laughs) and so he's like, oh, that's, he's like, that's dope. And I was like, yeah, I sing. And I think he's like, what do you sing? And I'm like, well, I, I sing all sorts of genres. I was like, but I started with R and B and like jazz and Mm -hmm. soul. And he's like, oh, that's tight. And I was like, thank you, DJ (laughs) Symphony. So like she took a picture with him and then, um, like they bought merch and I think like, they, my mom and him exchanged numbers because they probably, I think he was like, well, we'll get to talk more because he found out I sang. I yeah. don't remember. It happened like, yeah. I guess. So then, oh wait, no, he, yeah. And so then he started following me on Instagram and then I followed him back. And I think we just spent the rest of the day in Oceanside. My mom's like, oh, that's so sick. And I was like, yeah, it was super cool. And so like a few days later, I think, he, oh yeah, he told me he's like DM me like a video of you singing, and I was like yeah sure. I was like I have Instagram Reels and mm-hmm. like IGTV videos of me yeah. singing. I have a YouTube channel. I have a few songs out. You can do all that. And he's like yeah sure. So then a few days later, my mom's like have you DM'd him? And I'm like no, not yet. And she's like we'll do it. Mm-hmm. I was like okay. So I like sent him a cover of me singing "Ain't No Sunshine" by Bill Withers, and he's like girl mm. you can sing. <laughs> and I was like thank you DJ Symphony. 
And I, I just sent it to him. I was like, we met the other day. Um, you talked to my mom as well. I'm the singer. Here's a video of me singing. Just want to hear your feedback. Yeah. It was more of just like, well, what do you think? Just to get a professional opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's like, girl, you can sing. And I was like, that's actually really good to know. And it was like, it was reassuring to hear from someone at that level like no you can sing and i'm like mm -hmm. i know i can but that's reassuring <laughs> yeah so then my mom and him kept my mom and him kept in contact and then he was asking like has she ever opened for anyone or has mm -hmm. she like performed at that level and she's like well no you know she's just we've really focused on writing and she's yeah. focusing on developing that and then like trying to come up with an ep or an album and like we ran into like a few things where i was like God, it's like my sound i'm not being heard right now mm, i see what you're saying and then he was like well how old is she how long has she been singing and she was like well she started singing when she was 14 and how and he goes how old is she now and she goes oh she's 19 mm -hmm. and he's like she should have opened for someone at 17 and i was like mm. should have started at that age yeah. i was like damn i was like i know i'm only 19 but like at that time i was like shit really yeah. i didn't feel like pressure like oh fuck i messed up i was just like that's fascinating. You have 17 year olds opening for yeah, people. Yeah, uh huh. And so, or like in some, I guess in some kind cases. Kind of just opened your eyes. Yeah, I was like, oh man. Oh wow. So he goes, okay, let, let me just, he, so he heard that and he was like, well, well, what's she trying to do? And she's like, my mom's like, well, she's trying to like come up, come out with an EP, but she's trying to like find her sound. I yeah. knew my sound was soul r&b but then also alternative kind of indie mm. and it was just like a blend it's yeah. like shade erica badu or like it just it ranged from so many different artists and i was like i want to combine it into one yeah and yeah. so he was like okay let me see what i can do and i was like what <laughs> and like my mom's like symphonies you know we're keeping in contact and he's saying he wants to help you and i was like please did I get a phone? Anyways. Don't worry about it's it. It's probably me. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> like, I think a few days go by, and then he's, like, talking to my mom. Why did I move that? Um, <laughs> he's talking to my mom. I have a dog hair in my mouth. I'm not going to pick it out. Hey, I'm going to do it. Uh, You're good. Sorry, You're guys. Good. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> so then one night in, like, I think, like, a few weeks went by, and then... He goes, I need you to, I want you to ask G. He calls me G and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> then he fun. goes, so Jizz is going on tour in July and she has the option to perform in either Reno, no we're figuring out either she can perform in Reno, Nevada or Oakland, California. And he goes, I know she wants to do it, meaning me. He yeah. goes, are you comfortable for her to do it? Yeah. Because he's like, because you're mama bear. Yeah. And my yeah. mom's like, oh, my baby girl. She's like, I don't <laughs> want to pimp my daughter out. And I'm like, I'm not being pimped out. Um, <laughs> and so um, she was like, she, and Symphony was like, she has the opportunity. He's like, I just need to talk to a few people. She has the opportunity to open for Jizza at one of his shows. And I was wow. like, fuck. But I cried because I was so Dude, scared. Dude, I would too. I was That's, like, huh? That is insane. It was so funny. So then my mom's like, so? She goes, I know she wants to do it. She goes, I would be, if Gabby did it, like, I'm cool with Gabby doing it. Just like, we're going to be there. And he's like, yeah, no, of course. But I remember I was like washing the dishes and she goes, Gabby. And I go, yeah. And then like Oakland, California turned out they're like, no, Reno, Nevada. So mm -hmm. it ended up being Reno, Nevada. But it was like still, it was like twenty out of a hundred percent being in able the to air, do it. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, it quickly changed. So like that, I remember I was like washing the dishes, and my mom was like, "Symphony had wants me to ask you something," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and she goes, "He wants to know if you would like to open for Jizza in Reno, Nevada," and I'm like, "Huh?" <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, like." be the opening act and she's like yes you'd open before jizza and be opening for his show in reno i thought reno was in california i was like fuck yeah we uh, yeah. like nevada i was like what <laughs> so <clears throat> i was like i like when i was told that i was like 
I just had like no sort of emotional reaction. I was just like, I need a minute. Yeah, it was just so out. overwhelming. Yeah, I was like, fuck. I wanted to do it, but then I was scared to do it because I'm like, am I even like, what the fuck do I do? I was like, I don't even have like an R&B song out. Yeah. But I was like, well, I want it to be 100% and then I'll decide. Mm -hmm. So that night it was like 20. Then the next day it was 50. And then like a few hours later and the next day it was like 60%. Yeah. And then it kept going up and he goes 80%. And then like he called me and he's just like, they're cool with you doing it. And I was like, fuck my, oh fuck. Wow. <laughs> so that then is crazy. I was like, okay, yes. And I said, what can I sing? And he go, and I'm like, well, what does the crowd like? And then he goes, they're huge Lauren Hill fans. And I was like, yeah. fuck, I already know. Killing me softly. Mm -hmm. So July 31st, 2022, I had the Reno um, performance opening for Jizz of Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's so weird saying wow. that. I'm like, in that moment, you're just, I, but it was like, it was weeks of mentally preparing for it and mm -hmm. having, because I'm the type of performer that's like, I stand, I, I do move around on stage, but I stand still and it's more of like a sultry kind of slower sort of mm -hmm. performance where I'm like, I'm singing about, I don't know, just like, sadness or yeah. like love and it's in like a sad way and it's like oh whatever but i had to really change how i performed for this mm. performance yeah i always do that i need to stop just let it flow Gabby. <laughs> so i had to be really high energy and that was new for me uh, so yeah. yeah so i was mentally preparing for that visualizing how i would perform figuring out what to wear and just how to fucking do it. Because I was yeah, like, I've never yeah. opened for anyone. I'm just going to fucking do it. So then, um, yeah. So we flew the 30th of July to Reno. And then the next day was the performance. I remember, like, we were walking. It was at Virginia Street Brew House, which was mm -hmm. in downtown Reno. The we. Reno has the weirdest energy. Really? It's so odd. <laughs> it's like, it's like the Promenade Mall, but just uh, weird. Okay. I don't really know how to describe it. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Well, no, I know. Okay, so like, remember in elementary school when we do like intervention, we go to like a different yeah. classroom and you're like, I don't know what to do here. That's literally oh, Reno. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're just tossed into a new environment. Yeah, and you're like, like <laughs> uh, It was also right. like, at the, the height of summer so it was like 110 so i was like damn what are we doing this rehearsal? <laughs> so then um we're, we're i'm like there's like a starbucks like right that is so satisfying <laughs> i wish i could do that just oh <laughs> so there was like a starbucks across the um the venue and my mom and i were sitting there because we were waiting for symphony and jizza to get there and then their manager so oh, i was okay. like fuck i'm about to meet the manager i was like hey guys <laughs> And so <laughs> Symphony's like, okay, come around. And so he walks us, and then right in front of us is Jizza. And I was like, dang. I'm like, my mom's like, <gasps> because she grew up listening to yeah. Wu Tang, and she knows his Jizza. Yeah, exactly. And you know his voice when you listen to Wu Tang. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, Gabby, that's Jizza. I'm like, mom. And she's <laughs> like, oh. she wasn't like shouting. She was like, mm -hmm. hi, Symphony. And then she, and then um, mm -hmm. Symphony was like, hey just a wait up real quick and then he turns around and then he's like this is gabriella she's opening for you mm -hmm. i shook his hand he's like nice to meet you and then he shakes my mom's hand and she's like it's nice to meet you and then she's like <laughs> <laughs> and i was like <laughs> dude it felt like a dream i was like am i gonna wake up right now okay, i'm gonna fucking wake <laughs> yeah. up am i but we go through sound check and then i sing and then the manager i remember was like in the green room and then i'm on stage rehearsing and then he comes out and then he goes like that and then he turns around and i was like hi i'm <laughs> yeah. opening for jizza i'm sure you know but yeah. this is me yeah. it's me hi and then um like i rehearse it's all good we do like we check the levels and everything yeah. and then um and then i come off the stage and then the manager's like you're opening well, no, he already knew I was opening. He's like, hey, I just want to stop you. He's like, I came out and I was shocked to hear you. He's like, your voice is really good. And I was like, <laughs> I got the approval. Nice, <laughs> And nice. so then I'm getting ready to leave. And I'm like, all right, peace out, guys. I'll see you at 7.30. Yeah. And then Symphony's like, hey, get. He's like, hey, G, wait up real quick. And I was like, yes. Jizz is sitting down. And he's like, come here. 
And then Symphony's like, come here. He's like, talk to Jizza. Jizza wants to talk to you or something. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I stood, I was just standing, like bending over, like, hi. <laughs> and he's just, oh wait, I probably, whatever. It's you're fine. good, you're good. And then like, Jizza just was like waving to me and he said hello. And then like, I was just standing up, like, hi. <laughs> hi. I was like, I'm Gabriella. It's nice to meet you. And then he looks, at, he was about to talk and then he looks at me and he's just like, wow, you're so pretty. You've got a beautiful smile. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Jizza said I'm pretty. <laughs> and so. And so, like, we just sat down, and then he was so nice. And he was, Aww. like, he sat me down, and he's, like, you have us supporting you. And he goes, this crowd, he's like, I know you're... He, go, he was just explaining how some audiences can be. If they love you, they will love you. If they don't like you, they will boo you off the stage. Yeah. And he's, like, we've seen it happen. So he was, like, they're going to love you. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. He's like, yeah. you're going to do great. And I heard you. You have a great voice. You're going to be fine. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I was like, I am going to be fine. And I was like, Jizza said I'm going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. Symphony said I'm going to be fine. We're going to be good. You got all the reassurance you need. <laughs> yeah, so that was Reno. Wow. I performed and I was on stage. Dude, <laughs> have you ever like, when you perform, do you... Like, you're performing, you're doing your thing, but you have, like, the most random thoughts in your head. Yes, dude. <laughs> it's literally me all the time. I'm always like, what am I going to do after this? And I'm like, shut the fuck up, I'm like, yeah. perform. <laughs> dude, I'm always, like, mid-passing out when I'm performing. Yeah, you're like, yeah. You, like, zone out or something. It's so, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's like, weird. maybe we're dissociating because we're scared. Pretty much. I would yeah, assume man. so. I don't no. know. Performing is different. It's just, yeah, it's a man. completely different experience than, yeah. like, anything else in life. Yeah, I'd say, like, I, I think I remember, no, I remember one thought. I remember, I was, like, performing, doing my thing, singing the song, and I was like, mm. man, I'm so fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> but, and also, I was just like, I can't wait to go to bed. Oh. Because <laughs> it was, like, also, it was kind of fucking cool, because, like, they had, like, there was, like, this VIP section, and then, like, the audience. Mm -hmm. So, Symphony, when they got there, they're, like, Symphony was texting my mom, like, hey, we're ready. Is Gabby ready? take her we want her to come to the green room mm -hmm. so then i'm like on the vip area and then i forgot who grabs me but oh no the security guard like comes over and he's like they're ready for you and i was like getting escorted and i was like oh this is the next cool. level shit <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like walking behind the security guard like <laughs> that's so I was, like, cool this is what it's like in it <laughs> but um i don't know why i brought that up but yeah it was just crazy man it's wow. like like now Like, oh, wow, six months from, like, six months later, it's, like, I think about it, and I'm, like, I was so, like, I was excited, but I was so chill, and I was, like, if I weren't <laughs> me, I would have been, like, you fucking open for Jizza! Yeah, right. How are you just That's like, That's yeah, insane. Man. <laughs> Dude, no, it's, 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 like, it was such a great opportunity. I'm so grateful for it. Like, <sighs> so I don't cool. know, man. That's I was so just, like, cool. I don't take any credit for it. I'm like, Symphony, like, really, like, he has been very supportive. And even then, he's like, you got it, G. He's like, you're going to be fine. He's like, you ready? And I'm like, eh. yeah. yeah. And then now, just, he is a really good mentor. That's amazing to hear. So I'm like, thank you. That is universe. so great. How did yeah, man. this, how did that event, like, affect the course of your career? <gasps> Not just in, like, opportunities you've gotten, but mm -hmm. in your mentality, your belief in yourself your self mm -hmm. your understanding in your abilities <laughs> <laughs> sorry you're good sorry sorry what was the question like how did it <laughs> how did it change the course of I your almost career choked, no, so that's what i got distracted sorry say it again how did it change the course of your career and how you understand your abilities um it showed me that i don't know it I guess I need a minute. Hang on. No, you're good. Uh, you should put like you should insert a sound that's like doom, 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 doom. like a little sound card. Yeah, everyone will be like, "Oh, that's that's cute." Anyways, <laughs> um, I'd say it. <clears throat> I mean, it shows that like you're capable mm. of anything. Mm -hmm. I, it's so cliche, man. But now I get it. It's like yeah. that I'm capable of doing what is asked of me and doing it 
even more than I expect. Mm. So I knew, like, I know I have a good voice. I know I'm a good performer, at least, I yeah. guess. I mean, I can, I have to ask you that because you've seen me perform. No, you are, like, you're an amazing performer. Really? You put so much emotion into... Well, that's good. Yeah. No, you like, really get the crowd into it. It's good to know that... I, it's good to get people who see me instead of me seeing myself because I'm always... I was very self-critical of myself as a writer and as a performer. But when I did that, I was like, anything, when you put a lot of your self into something and energy into it mm -hmm. and belief in yourself, like you literally can do anything because mm. the way I was before performing and then as I performed was a completely different sort of energy. Oh, yeah. So you know me, like I'm always messing around in here and I'm like, <laughs> like doing <laughs> random shit and I'm like, like, I write the saddest shit, and I'm like, oh, but it feels so good. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's, like, my own sort of creativity and the, how I am as an artist is somber sometimes. But when it came to that, it did show me that I can be versatile mm, or versatile. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Because I thought I wasn't. Because I was like, well, I do do this a lot. Is that just me? Am I not diverse enough? Mm -hmm. But then when I did that, I was like, what else could I do? exactly so i was like okay it opened so, up the opportunities for yourself yeah, yeah so that's really cool that's definitely what it did i was like wow i can do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was scared though wow yeah man it's crazy dang that's an insane experience yeah wow i cannot imagine yeah, was, so what so do you cool. have coming forward <clears throat> what what are your plans in the near future where do you see gabriella warren going in the next year um I was about to say something really like messed up, and I'm not gonna say it. It's a stupid <laughs> joke, anyways. Um, I see my I see myself um, sharing like what I'm creating with the world, mm. but it's like I already like I'm already working on my second book. Nice, nice. Flex. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it's like I had the first kind of manu. It's not a complete manuscript, the first draft, but mm -hmm. I was reading over it, reading over it, and I was like, none of this is resonating anymore. Mm. So now I just got a journal, so I'm going to handwrite all the poems I already have written yeah. and order them myself instead uh, of on a computer. Okay. So I already have the idea for the name. I'm trying to figure out a cover for it and then try and find a publishing company that has integrity and nice. it's reputable. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like i want this to be my career you need it to sustain mm -hmm. yourself exactly it needs to yeah have that some sort of financial success eventually yeah and it's like i could do so much for free i love doing it just because i love doing it but i'm like i'm 20 i do yeah need, i do it's, need financial it's where stability. you start turning your passion into an a, like an actual yeah like, career like financial a life. sustainability yeah. through it so i have that and then i want i'm really into ambient music and i feel like creating an ambient album to go along with my second book that would be great yeah because it's like you know people can read your book and um feel what they're feeling based off what they're reading from the poem but having something having kind of like an audio what's the right way to say it having almost like a guide almost yeah, yeah. it's like yeah it's kind of like an audio book but with just mm, music yeah that makes sense it's like Having that sound to go with the poem. It's like the sound, your poem soundtrack is essentially what it would be. Literally, that's ex the poems if they were a song. Yeah. Or if they had a sound. Yeah. So I want to do that. And then I'm already working on an EP with Symphony. Nice. Well, three songs. Nice. But that's coming out soon. Not saying. Yes, I can't say. But, yeah. Um, these three songs are just so different than to what I had released before. They... Mm -hmm. They are, they showcase what I can do in the sense of creating a story oh, and then okay. telling the story and like melodically how the different influences that I have used for them. So it's like one of them is very jazzy and unpredictable kind of. It's like, okay. it's very abstract and it's one of my favorites. I sing a few lyrics in Spanish. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, okay. And then, like, the other one is the one I did with you. Where, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, oh, my God, dude, that one is one of my favorite songs I've ever really? done. Yeah. Oh, that's great to it hear. Was, it was just in, like, it was just you and I, and we were just chill. 
And then, like, it was, there was something about the energy of the, of the both of us, but then the studio that day, where I was like, mm. this song is really something The vibes else. in the studio. Yeah, yeah. all <laughs> <laughs> um, And it was like, now it's one of my favorite songs, because all it is is just electric guitar and then me singing, and then, like, a synth. And I was like, mm-hmm. perfect. And I sent that to needs. yeah, and I sent that to Symphony. I was like, this song just I need the vocals mastered. I don't want anything else done to it. Yeah. And then we did the other song in here as well, the club song. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm like, Symphony, please, I just please like do whatever you want with it. I don't care. Make it's like what it what that reference track that we made for him, I'm like, it was just so cool, man. And all three songs are so different from each other. Yeah, exactly. But, I, it, what's so funny, it's like these three songs were written based off of one person. But really? It's, yeah, and he wow. doesn't know. <laughs> so it's all the different phases of emotions that you can go through kind of portrayed as an EP. Yeah, and so it was like, I'd say, hmm. yeah, man, no, that's exactly it. It's about the same person, but different moments with this person, not in person with him, but on my own capturing different moments of it's like, like the progress of these, your relationship yeah, with this person these three songs it's just me overthinking <laughs> uh, no honestly it's like it i did base it around like an interaction we had but then it was more of like what, what the thoughts that i went through the different phases of emotions that i went through yeah because i went through that yearning for him mm-hmm. and then i went through that i am so I know you're into me and I'm going to write a song about how I know. Yeah. And then another song, it's like, well, if you want me, show me, but this is what I require. So Mm. it's kind of like that. Those are the three songs tell the story of like one single guy. I see. Wow. That's really cool. It kind of shows the developing story. (laughs) That's so cool. That is great. I'm so excited to hear that one. What else do I have working on? Um, that's it. I paint. Oh, yeah, I've been seeing some of that. How has that been going? How did that develop? Sometimes I just, like, I do edit the photos. Not, like, Photoshopping it. Like, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. It's, like, I just, um, like, as a photo, the paintings look so much better than they do in person. But Uh that, honestly, there was, like, a point last year, like, December 2022, from, like, okay, November 30th to New Year's. I was so scattered and there's mm. so much happening during that time where I was like, fuck, okay, I cannot sit with myself, like, all right, like grieving and then the holidays around yeah. with one less person in the family, mm. stuff like a, a relationship not working out, mm-hmm. uh, and just <sighs> having to be with myself. A jumble of emotions. Dude, and it yeah. was like, I was missing my dad, grieving my dad, and then celebrating the holidays with my family knowing how heavy that those times were Uh, were. i see what you're saying yeah man and then like um wanting to be with someone and you're like i i just want you Mm -hmm. i want you and then you're like but i I can't for and also it's like a lesson of how i am as a person i try to control things because I don't like things that I don't mm. like the unknown. I don't like being able to not control anything and yeah. to not have a final say and to not have my answer and a solution. But that's life. Mm. So I was like yeah. having to come to terms with that myself, sitting with things that I was uncomfortable about myself and just like, oh my God, it was so much that even poetry and singing and songwriting could not. I could not, uh, you know what I mean? So painting, I was like, I don't give a shit about what I'm painting. I'm just going to use the colors that I feel. Wow. So it was like. That's great, actually. Yeah. That is so cool. Man, like, it was it was heavy, dude. And I was like, well, fuck. I, I don't like feeling. Mm. I feel, I enjoy emotions, but I don't like having to face what I'm feeling. Yeah. So I was like. I was so, I would fluctuate so much where I feel like I was grounded and I felt like I, you know what, this is life, everything happens for a reason, move forward. And then there were other times where I was like, I'm so fucking mad, nothing's going my way. I am vindictive in the sense of, 
oh, like, I wanted this to work. This is unfair. Oh. Oh, like, I don't want to have to face this. I don't know. It was like so, you know what? It felt like a lot of things were coming to the surface and it was oh. hard to deal with. And I was like. Just things you weren't, either weren't aware of or actively yeah. or passively ignoring. I would, oh my God, Gavin, mm. I would ignore so much. You just and, like. No, I'd be like. Mm, mm, I'll deal with it later. Like intrusive thoughts. Mm -hmm. I had that my whole life. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. no, no, no. Gabby, don't think that that's negative. Uh -huh. Everything came to the surface of my, literally half my life. And I was like, oh, well, fuck. Green. <laughs> yeah. So then I was like, I can't sit with myself right now because I don't like how this is feeling. So then painting has done something. Paint, it's like, as I'm painting, it's almost like afterwards, I'm like going over. I can like, after I paint, I can still see the painting in my head. And I'm like, mm. and for some reason, it, it helped me process everything. Wow. I really, man, I'm going on these tangents. That is so cool. I, that is, wow. It, I don't know, man. I just, wow. I just say shit. And I just let myself go. Wee, 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 wee. It's so cool how different, like, avenues of artwork mm -hmm. from audible to visual you're able to kind of pick apart your emotions in different ways <clears throat> yeah like because like you said like poems and songs they, they just can only do so much yeah you weren't able to get it i don't know that's interesting that's something i definitely want to mess around with because yeah wow that's cool i don't i don't mm. know what's possible to get through to portray through a visual aspect you know yeah and it's like I like post them to Instagram. Like there's one that I painted that I'm using for myself because I I wanted to hand paint the cover for the ambient album. Yeah. Because nice. those colors represent what I feel. Nice. So it was like and the poems themselves, because these poems are so good. And I'm like <laughs> But anyways, um like there's so much that I can say in a poem. I could write so much prose. Or I can write so fucking much. I can write as many journal entries as I can about yeah. the same thing. And I'm like, why do I still feel it? Well, also, it's like, I can sit with my emotions oh. now because I'm like, yeah, let's just have a conversation. Yeah. What am I feeling? But then it was like painting and then putting a song to the painting was like, here, I'm showing everyone what I'm feeling now. The full aspect of that is so cool. Because that's yeah. one thing that I would love to <clears throat> experiment with, is like when it comes to cover art. Because oh, that's so one thing where, like, I kind of struggle. Because it's hard. Like, I can come up with ideas and yeah. send them off to somebody to do. Mm -hmm. But there's just something different about, like, I'm the only person that's truly going to know that how to portray, it. portray yeah. it in the way that I know matches. You know what yeah, I mean? It matches man. for me because it has yeah. to match for me mm -hmm. or else it's not going to match for anybody that sees it. Right. You know and then, I mean? like... Yeah, and, like, if you'd get it back, you're like, I see what you're doing, but I see this. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to do that with another artist. Like, because obviously that's, like, that's the whole process of getting yeah. another artist to do something. Yeah. But when it comes to, like, such a creative expression, like, you almost want it to universally be you in all aspects. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, sometimes it it's like this, it's like, it's vulnerable as well because it's all of you in it oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah yeah it's like oh i painted this well what inspired this painting because of this mm -hmm. so i was feeling this and then it's like why you say certain things that's in like so a song. true it's all you you kind of have to ex you're fully exposing that emotion but it's like but still you can like hide behind it you know what i yeah, mean like you like <laughs> yeah wow like, that's why when i said like these three songs is based on like one guy but he said guy doesn't know doesn't know yeah but you're able to just express but it all it's like these songs are about you dude and then, <laughs> but he doesn't know and it's so funny but it's also like i can still i'm telling him yeah i felt this but i can still hide behind it wow is that toxic no <laughs> no 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 wow, no no no, so no it's cool. not but it's like maybe it's the same for you it's like if you're writing about a specific girl you're like she might know, but... Oh, dude, no, no, most <laughs> definitely. I've had so many thoughts where it's like, God, I have all this shit that I want to fucking tell you, but you won't listen, motherfucker. Dude! So, what? like, I'm just going to express it here, and then I'm able to... It's so much easier. So much easier. And then I you like... don't have to go through the confrontation part of it. Dude, oh my... It's more of like... Even, I know communication is great, and I'm mm -hmm. learning to be more communicative, 
But when it comes to like expressing my feelings directly to the person, I'm like. To be that vulnerable. I say something and I'm like, dooby dooby dooby. I say something and they're like, oh, okay. But when I write, I'm like fucking pouring it out. And I'm like. Yeah, because that's, that's like the thing I've always scary. thought. It's like, because I can tell you how I feel one way. But then if I were to write a song and sing it to you. You'd be like, well, why didn't you just tell me this? You're like, it's hard. All the emotion rather than like, because like the, it's hard to explain something to somebody with words when, and then the only emotion you can have really is either like, I'm telling it to you like this or I'm angry or I'm really sad when I'm doing it. Or (laughs) I can make this whole chord progression that literally invokes what I'm feeling. And then through that, somehow I'm able to implant that emotion into you. what it's like this whole conversation it's like it shows you like how intuitive it is you know what i mean like when we've when like when we've oh my god i'm gonna keep saying when we've when we've (laughs) (laughs) when oh my god you're good you ryan chris and i when when we (laughs) you know what it's like Carl, we when we <laughs> oh fuck um okay as a collective yes i'm just gonna say that <laughs> we've created so much based off like every single time i've come in here i'm always like what are we feeling yes. like what's recently happened and you're mm. like well something this th- this happened ryan goes this happened and i'm like shit okay let's write about it and then what we listen to we're like what oh fuck i realize just how much of wow like our process of what it's we're... intuitive we're Very like mu- what's my gut saying dude what it almost feels like to me is we lock ourselves inside <laughs> of this resonant chamber and i have this the mug the nag mug like it's uh, what i feel like is we lock ourselves in this resonant chamber i don't know how mm-hmm. to describe it and then through us explaining and just pouring out our, em- our emotions it just because we're locked in too. here, it reverberates through the room, and then we almost channel all this energy that we just let out whew, I'm into a creative you, pre-off like, process or something. Yeah, it, that's so. Like the first time I came in here, and we made the song, mm-hmm. and we were like, "What the fuck? What like, just happened?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were listening to it, and we were like, "Dude!" And then when like the most recent song, now I want to say it's so bad, but I know. Do you want to release, like, the first song that we did and then... I'm down to release anything that I we made, bro. I need to redo bro. some vocals, but... Oh, yeah, but, like, um, get no. it to the point where we're comfortable with releasing like, it. Like, if we did those as singles, or maybe, oh, like... Yeah. I could help with the cover art. That's what I'm saying. And like, I can let's design just have fun it. With it. Cause, Fuck yeah. Because the I what I really see happening here <clears throat> is, like, this studio has developed so much. And, like, what I would love to see... Is us make music that you guys are comfortable with releasing. Because, like... But also something that... I think also it's, like... When we bounce off of each other, it's because we are in the same generation. Yes, And we've had the same experiences. Mm -hmm. And we're like, shit. There's something about... When we create in here... Mm -hmm. I have not done that anywhere else. And I'm like... Where Did we our, just dude, come up with that? Our energy is able to link up in such a, like, interesting it's way. It's like a fruit roll up. No. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, it's just... Hey. I, I see what you're and saying. you're like, no fucking... Like, you know when you can break it apart? Yes. Kind of. You get it. Yeah. It's wow. like the cherry fruit roll up, to be specific. <laughs> with the tattoos. It's like... Yes! Is it a tattoo on other. your tongue? <laughs> I that don't is know. so funny. It's, like, it's for your me... crystal. You it... gotta show them the crystal. It's wrapped in copper. Mm-hmm. If you don't remember, copper is a conductor of electricity. It is. And it's wrapped around a clear quartz, which is a very powerful crystal. It can amplify any other crystal. Your aura, your uh, soul, your spirit. So <laughs> when he wears it, and even when you don't wear it, like you weren't wearing that when we first made the song. And mm-hmm. when you wore it, it was like... Mm-hmm. It was like, whoa. Like, this is a pyramid. Ever since, ever since I got this, it's just... We did Giza. Every we did Giza. What it was us? <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, 
We did Giza. That was our doing. That's we a, fooled that's the title of this. all of you. We did Giza. Wait, can you name? <laughs> I will definitely name it. That. Introducing that really... Gabriella. We Warren. did Giza. We did Giza. <laughs> no, honestly, no. It should just be we did Giza, and then like there's so much dog hair. I am so sorry. It's no, like it's, I'm shedding. It was my dog. It's okay. It was it's my not your dog fault. too. Max is like sorry. But anyways, <laughs> I know, for real. <laughs> but it's like, I really want to say the name of this song, but I won't. Because I do want to release it, mm -hmm. and I want to release it with you guys. But the last time I came in here with you, and when Chris was here, Chris, if you're gonna watch this, I love you, dude. I love yeah, Chris so I, much. Dude, that's He's the, the funniest fucking motherfucker. Homie. I love that fool, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm like today. Well, I'll get into that later. But um, when oh fuck, like when the guitar comes in and you reversed it, oh. and then it goes there, 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 there. I was like, ah! there's something about it. I was about like, I need a it. muzzle. Give me a muzzle, <laughs> like. Muzzle me now. We're gonna have everybody muzzled when they listen to this. <laughs> no biting. <laughs> no biting. <laughs> um, oh. But when we made that song, I was like, you know what was so funny? It was like, every, okay, so the two songs, the first one we did and then the most recent one, I don't know what happened, but the first song still resonates with me now because mm. it's happened. And it's like the, what, the lyrics I fucking wrote. I'm like, did I just manifest this shit? Did I channel something? Dude, it's weird going like, back to old projects and be like, I this made happened. this? I did this? Yeah, but then, so like, like okay, whoa. I will just say the lyric from both songs. So from the first one, I was like, how could you not love me like the yeah. other woman? And I'm like, okay, well, and that was just a song that I was... Those were lyrics that I just felt in the moment. Mm -hmm. I wasn't relating to anything. Mm. But when I listen to it now, I'm like, holy this fuck. This makes even more sense. I'm like, wow. wow. I'm like, the universe spoke through me. I had my <laughs> crystals too. I was yeah. like... <laughs> wow. But then... With this other song, I've seen your soul. I've been inside. It's too deep to let go. Do you trust that I'm enough? Can you accept my love? That's still fucking happening. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, something was happening during that time where I was like, this is what I need to fucking say. But he's not listening. Yeah. Like he is. But I'm like, you don't know how deeply I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And, I, and I can't tell you. So I don't want to scare you off. But then I'm yeah. also like, you, I can't say it now. And it's still happening where I'm like, I've seen your soul. Mm. Ah, fuck. When I came up with that, I was like... Dude, such good fucking lyrics. I've seen your soul. Oh I've my. been inside. It's too deep to let go. Dude, it's... Oh, oh. I need my muzzle. I need, you know, like those little leashes that kids have, the backpacks? Yeah. Like, that's like, literally... Like the, the Ryan fucking... holds me back from the synth. I'm like, ah! <laughs> like the rope with the rings. And you're like, kids Bro, on I, the line. You know what? I... You know what? We should just randomly like buy one and like just go out in public and fucking do that just to mess with people. <laughs> and you're just and everyone's like, "How old is she?" And I'm like, "I'm 20." It's like, why? Do she... I need to call the police? <laughs> yeah. You get like reported. That'd just be so random. It would be. You, like you. <laughs> it's a little weird saying that out loud. Cut this bit out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're good. But um, dude, there. I I've been listening to both, mm. especially the one that we recently did, just because I. I have I haven't shown anyone. Really? I haven't even yeah, shown my yeah. mom. Really? I showed my mom the first one, but then mm -hmm. I haven't shown my mom the second wow. one because I'm like, this is something that I want to surprise you with. Oh yeah, yeah. Because when, it's like when it's ready. Yeah, but there's something about both of those songs where I'm like, look at and we got it we got it done like five, six hours yeah, in one. In just day. one session. Just like, you know, and it, most of that session isn't even making music. It's just talking <laughs> and listening to other and reference then, like tracks. your mom okay, what's that soup your mom makes? It's like uh what does clam it have chowder a, or potato soup. The potato soup, potato bro. Soup. Oh my that's the one where it has like the bacon and broccoli in it. Yeah. Right? Oh my god. Bro, when that I shit first... fueled our studio session. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I have my shit with me. I have potato soup. I have my nagging mug. What more do I need? I have Max now. Yeah. Dude, it was... That soup is so fucking good. I think about it every time I come over. I'm like, John, can I have some potato some soup? Some soup. Some potato soup. Please. Yeah, it's um, tasty. Dude, like... You know what? That's like... That's like charcoal. 
What do you mean? You're like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> that's like charcoal. That's like, like coal. It's like the coal mining industry. It's already burnt out. <laughs> it, it's Okay, what I meant to say was it's like, okay, I got it. The potato soup is charcoal. Being in the studio is the flint in stone. Oh, yeah. now I see what you're hey, saying. Okay, my... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are you? How is it carbon? The I don't get it. The pause, you were like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, watch this back and be like, what the fuck was I saying? It's well, this. Well, this is episode one. This is just episode one with Gabriella Warren. So yeah, we've man. got many conversations to come. I will be come. back. I'll Most be like, definitely. Yeah, I mean, when are you doing it? No, seriously. I do want to come back. Oh, you will be back. Are we going to keep, is this going to keep going? Or are we like, is it time to go home? What? What do you mean? The podcast? Can we keep, like, going? We can keep talking, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. I was like, shit. I think it's over, but I'm like, just, sorry. No, we can Disregard. keep going. Let me just check and make sure that this is still filming. What would you do if it wasn't? That'd be so funny. It would suck, but it's My not. phone is... What? It's not recording? Not anymore. I'm assuming it just shut off, but... Oh, okay. Well, we got audio. Audio is for sure still going. Oh, the audio is, like, the best part. Yeah, man. Turn on. Reaper's like, you ruined me. Cool. We're at... Miss Gabriella Warren, we are at an hour, 11 minutes. Oh my god, that's 111. That's my angel number. Really? <laughs> that's wild. We've been here for an hour? <laughs> Holy shit. Time flies. All right. Sorry you guys don't get to see most of the video, but shit. Yeah, sorry. You know what it is. Seeing our beautiful faces. I know. But now we're back. What's oh my up? god, I did that sound. They're going to be like, ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was with my mouth. Anyways. Okay, so... What should what else should we talk about? Oh, I don't even know. I have. Let's just get into random shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um. Uh, oh, uh, we were talking about the, the crystal, crystal and the pyramids and yeah, shit. Yeah, we're gonna get. Oh. This gets deep all of a sudden. <laughs> and then it gets into like conspiracy theories. I know, instantly into like conspiracy <laughs> have theories. Have you guys heard of Giza? <laughs> Giza. So, this is an interesting thing that I've been understanding. Mm -hmm. I was just like, so. Taking it back to when I originally found this crystal. Yeah. Um, it was at my Uncle John's house. It was, I believe, right before our Aunt Irene passed. Mm -hmm. And I've always gone over to Uncle John's house, like, my entire life. But it had been a couple of years since we've gone over there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it was. I just You walk through his front door and on one of his, like, cupboard cabinet things... This was just sitting there. He has like a, a massive quartz, like coral, like shells and shit that are just there. Oh my there. gosh. And this was just sitting there. And I was like, mine. I don't know what it was. I had to pick it up. And when I went to go pick it up, I didn't fully grab it. I just put my hand around it and I felt, I don't know what it was. I just felt the energy of it. And I was wow. like, this is crazy because <clears throat> I have never, ever believed in any sort of crystal shit. I always thought it was the dumbest thing ever. Like, I was like, this it just doesn't make any sense. It's just a like rock. Like you and your damn rocks. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's just a rock. And then I picked it up and I was like, oh. no, like, I've now had a personal experience with this. Like, yeah, man. this is different. Yeah. And so from there, I, I just <clears throat> was carrying it around with me. John said I could have it. So I put it on a necklace and now I just wear it. Yeah. Going past that. Then I then I figure out, okay, so what is the science behind clear quartz? Why mm -hmm. why did I feel what I felt? I go into it and I realize that clear quartz holds a property called plyoelectricity, mm -hmm. which means when you squeeze it, basically the way that the molecules kind of like line up, when it compresses, it creates a positive and negative charge on each molecule, which essentially turns mechanical energy of me squeezing it into electric. So literally just by applying any sort of mechanical energy, any sort of vibration sound onto this crystal, it'll create electricity. By wrapping the coil around it, the electricity flows through the coil and because of the current of it creates a magnetic field. So this in the way that it is creates an electromagnetic field, which is why somehow I was able to feel it, which makes sense. So it actually, the energy of it is real, whether or not you want to interpret it however it is, it's real. And I was like, whoa, this is insane. And people use it all the time, like in, a, you know, like little lighters where you pull the trigger and then it goes, it's like long ones. <clears throat> yeah. That uses quartz crystal. Just the act of you pulling it creates a spark the and hell? a light. It's used in our technology. And I'm like, this is so kind of like, insane. Like the, 
not like a lighter lighter, but like the one where you have to like press yeah, the like long a gasoline one. Yeah, like one. a grill lighter. Yeah. Oh yeah, grill where you, lighter. Where you pull it and then it the spark. That's how it's working. Wow. And okay, I'm gonna, like, this I'm is crazy. And then I've I've always always been infatuated with the pyramids of giza and like me monoliths just massive monoliths that i have a book on ancient egypt really yeah barnes and nobles is clutch Ooh, i was like come here yeah and i spend so much money there dude i fucking i, I don't need, know what it is i need to bring it over you should i would love to oh read that oh my god <laughs> we'll just like read next podcast is <laughs> just reading so this is cool. in 400 bc <laughs> Cleopatra. I literally do not. I do not have like the time right. Anyways, I don't. I don't either. With a lot of, <laughs> um, so this gets into even deeper of Egypt. So what? I get this crystal. <gasps> so I learn excited. about its properties, and then I start. I already I've, know what you're gonna say. I have a feeling. Okay. Are you gonna say that quartz comes out of Egypt? Um. No. no. But damn it. it. Okay. So <laughs> I started watching this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Rogan podcast, and he brings on this guy <laughs> called Randall Carlson and. Okay. Graham Hancock. Mm -hmm. So they both have these conjoining theories about the greater Dryas impact theory, which is the idea that 12,000 years ago at the end of the mm -hmm. ice age, right. there was massive comet impacts that basically wiped out all of human civilization, oh. ended the ice age and created a massive ginormous flood because everything was frozen. All of a sudden the ice caps melt melted. over instantly, essentially wipe out a lot of whatever human history and civilization would have been there at the time. There's a lot of evidence that shows that this is what happened. Blah, blah, blah. I've always heard this theory. And then Graham Hancock creates a Netflix show called Ancient Apocalypse that goes deeper into this. And is this shows... still on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I'm going to watch it. So it basically shows how Pyramid of Giza. <clears throat> there's a... First of all, there's thousands of pyramids all over the world. And underwater. Underwater, everywhere. And yep. they're always pyramids. This is a recurring theme. And he basically goes in to show that, like, no, these pyramids are maybe, like, 20, 30,000 years older than we think they are. Like, we think that the Pyramid of Giza was built 5,000 years ago. Oh, it's so We just older. know that they've been using it from 5,000 years ago. So, you think ancient Egyptians kind of came across it? Mm-hmm. I think, <gasps> I think that the Egyptians were just a yes. second civilization that kind of rebuilt. What the hell rebuilt. was that? Yeah. It's insane, but... Maybe they built over something yes they did so this is where it gets into the science so like i just realized oh so there's these giant monoliths what were they originally used for why would you build them everywhere around the planet it doesn't make sense and why are they so geometrically perfect and they always line up with sirius and the the con dude, the star the, right all sorts of constellations and like i'm like is sirius why? a star or a constellation yeah it's a star so okay. it's one of the stars within i think the orion constellation like the in this belt the three I think. I, shit. Okay. I got a meteorite <laughs> oh, from shit. the Sirius. Okay. I fucking Whoa. lost it. Whoa. No, okay. Here's the thing. I keep grab. Stop. Um, <laughs> I love crystals. You yeah, know me. Yeah. I literally have, I'm just going to say, I have some in my bra. I carry them in my bra. <laughs> that is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, it's tucked in. But then also I carry them in my purse. I'm wearing um, pure gold. That's probably amethyst. This is amethyst. That's moldavite. Nice. This is from... This is from a meteorite. Wow. And it's a very That's powerful so crystal. That's so cool. Yeah, man. And this is copper. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Just zoom. Just <laughs> zoom. That would be crazy. Anyways, but I had a... I really hope I can somehow find it or it will appear to me somehow. But it was this small little meteorite from the Sirius star. Wow. Shit, it's... That is insane. What constellation is... Or is Sirius a constellation? I think it's, it's I think it's one planet a part of a constellation. But maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't sure. remember. All I know is that all these monoliths are completely well, aligned like, with them perfectly. Doesn't the tip of like, doesn't the tip, <laughs> doesn't the tip of Giza align with like the moon and sun when it rises and sets? Uh, I believe it has to do with the solstices. The moon, right? I think solstices. Oh. But there, so the three pyramids that are there are lined up perfectly <clears throat> with Orion's, the Orion belt. They're lined up perfectly with that. The pyramid itself is lined up with true north within like a fraction of a degree. And so it's like, not only did they know the science, they, they were, were into able, astrology as well very and much. astronomy. Like they aligned everything literally perfectly in a way that I don't even think we'd be able to rebuild it now. Like maybe we could, but 
Also, you find out, okay, well, the stones used to make it were mined out of a quarry hundreds of thousands of miles away. Like, far. So they had to move these massive multi-ton stones to where they were going to place, cut them perfectly, and then hoist them to build a monolith. Doesn't make any... We literally cannot explain how it's how they did it. They, like, I've heard... Oh, they had 55 people to one stone, which weighed a thousand pounds. It doesn't but make like, sense. Do you to know me. how big those pyramids are? Those you are fucking huge. You have to lift huge. them, and then you have to be do able to think... align them perfectly. I don't know. Okay, so like, if they got those stones from like a quarry, you said hundreds or thousands of miles. I hundreds? At least <clears throat> tens of thousands of miles away. Like what? far. Like far. <laughs> like. Okay, so let me explain. Dude, they, so, no, those pyramids, okay, the Giza pyramids weren't there then. That sounds like they were moved somehow. Like, they what were, do you mean? like, if they found those hundreds of thousands of miles, or you said mm-hmm. thousands, yeah. like, you, miles away, mm-hmm. maybe they were dragged, maybe they can walk, I'm just kidding, but that makes no sense. That's the thing. Well, okay, we know, I didn't know we about know that. We know where they were quarried and they were mined, so we know the link between where they were mined from and then the pyramid How where it was built. How they even get there then? That's Nobody knows. Far as Nobody fuck. knows. But all I know <laughs> is then going in. I watched this video. Um, There's this video by this guy called Y Files, and he basically explains the link between the Pyramid of Giza and Nikola Tesla. And it makes it Nikola all Tesla. make sense. So mm-hmm. Nikola Tesla, he his idea was man. was wireless electricity and mm-hmm. the ability to be able to stream electricity in almost the atmosphere to be tapped into wirelessly. He was successfully able to do this with a tower. His tower was built on top of this water spring. And that And water has a lot of energy mm-hmm. as well. I don't know like the full science between behind Tesla's because he mysteriously died and then a and lot of his manuscripts was, was just stolen. Yeah, so but what we do know is that Tesla was on the course of being able to completely just change all of our science and the way that we interact with the world. Watching this video on the pyramids. It then makes sense. Because so the outside of the pyramid okay. was from this granite that was mined however far away, right? Mm-hmm. The outside granite is not, can, it doesn't contain any quartz. It's not conductive. It is an insulator. So essentially the outside blocks of the pyramid is an insulator to keep electrical energy inside. inside. The granite created inside is highly concentrated in quartz which allows it to be a conductor. So energy can flow and basically manifest and grow within this massive monolith and cannot go to the outside, except through the gold cap on the very top. Gets even crazier. The pyramid, every single pyramid ever made is built on top of a natural spring, the exact same way that Tesla would make it. A weird, a natural spring. There were scientific studies that showed that there is residue in the pyramid that shows chemical reactions, which I believe would result in either nitrogen or hydrogen, like some sort of reaction that would create such density within the chambers of the pyramid that it allowed for electricity to be even more conductive. So the idea being that by using the resonant energy that is being created by this spring, this natural spring on the in underwater that resonates with the Earth's frequency. You use this energy, and through its manipulation with a chemical process, with the quartz, you create an immense amount of electricity. You said the Earth's, like, Earth's resonance, so mm-hmm. human resonance. What is it, 440 hertz? 432. They were saying 440. 440 is what the hertz is for music. Really? Yeah, the frequency for all. It, you, okay, it used to be 432 hertz, which mm-hmm. is, they considered it to be a more pleasurable and mm-hmm. kind of, a more pleasurable experience when it comes to listening to music. Mm-hmm. I listen to 432 hertz for, like, meditation yeah. and stuff like that. It's really nice. Mm. But then now they changed today's standard for yeah, releasing I, music at 440. Know. It might have been 432. All I know, it's... Schumann resonance is the resonance of the earth. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it aligns <clears throat> with this. And the fact what that... What the fuck? An electrical energy <laughs> is created through the resonance of the earth. And then they proved the pyramids are instruments. So, you know, with a bottle... I forget the exact term, but with so a bottle... You're te- wait, real quick. So you're telling... Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, this bottle analogy, I know where you're going. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me the three pyramids, different resonance. Do you... F- so... Are the three pyramids at Giza 
each a different sort of like note i don't know hertz. about the the pure like each different one but the main pyramid the pyramid the main the center middle one. one yeah i know that this one specifically resonates at an f chord at four something probably 432 course f chord what the earth resonates at if you've ever opened up a macbook and it goes oh that's the chord that it's creating and the idea Pyramids being can sing. Yes, really? they can. They like through these stones that, that they chipped away, like with a bottle. If you change the um, the mass of the, wa the water, the fucking water, it changes the sound. So in the same way, they're doing that exact same thing, but with stone. So they chipped out an amount of stone. So as this the resonant water and sound and vibrations and energy goes through, it channels through this, creates an F chord, and then would go to the gold top of the pyramid. Which is the top, the highest thing that's around, and then that yeah. energy would go to the atmosphere, and then you'd have wireless electricity. I don't know what why it would align with stars. There's probably some sort of celestial thing that we just still can't understand, but we do know this is what the pyramids can do. Tesla... I bet you obelisks can do the same thing most, as well. Most likely. <gasps> Fuck! That makes so much sense! <laughs> oh my god, Gavin! Okay. <clears throat> okay. In Washington, D.C., the yeah. obelisk, right mm -hmm. across Lincoln Memorial, straight fucking across is the obelisk. Where is it in front of? A reflection pole. Really? It's in front of water. Uh... Not only that, where is the other obelisks in the world? Um. Is there an obelisk near the Taj Mahal? The Taj Mahal is in front of water. But mm -hmm. do you notice there's some, okay, fuck, now that you mention the water, mm -hmm. the obelisk in Washington, D.C. is in front of a pool mm -hmm. of water. Mm. and oh god where's another obelisk why have i only ever seen one in my life i need a minute that okay that's the one i can yeah huh it's just there's these and weird... that's why obelisks always have a little the yeah. tippy top and there's always flashing lights at the top <laughs> it's like a little red light i don't know there's there's just a, <clears throat> these things that line up like coincidences and it kind of makes sense then, when you take in all the information then why what okay well Okay, so it sounds like there is a lot. Like I said it earlier, there is a lot of astrology mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. Be astronomy as well, because they're mm -hmm. following the alignment of planets and mm -hmm. the, uh, movement, the movement of the planets and where the stars are. Mm -hmm. Be but that's really interesting, these specific stars. And mm -hmm. why then are they... Well, then here's the thing, though. I mean, these pyramids were... Are a lot older than they than we know now mm -hmm. what were they doing that's the question is it's <laughs> they're like contacting extraterrestrials hey guys well that's what a lot of them literally say that they were doing like, i wouldn't doubt it you you have to watch that that show because they like there's this one that. island in iceland they use a lot of water for electricity oh really yeah they use so they use vol volcanoes as well whoa fucking volcanoes that's sick waterfalls for like they you need a, okay, so this was Zach Efron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he I forgot the name of the show, but he was um traveling around Iceland eating like different foods. Mm -hmm. And what they were showing is how Iceland, no fossil fuels, no fucking coal mm -hmm. because that's shitty. Yeah. Like we're so I, I believe like we could have been done with fossil fuels hundreds and hundreds of years oh, ago definitely. because we have the technology. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of shit. They just don't use it. It's just it. greed. It's just yes. greed. It's oh the same God. exact thing with Tesla. This, that They stole his manuscripts because they're like, we want him. It all goes in because greed and like Graham power. Hancock, when he was making that show, okay. he has always throughout all of his career experienced so much pushback. Everybody thinks that he's a kook. Everybody tries to discredit everything that he says. Because they know though, he's right. <laughs> yeah. Even though he has plausible straight information like all the evidence and it all links back in to say with tesla where because when you look at what tesla what happened with him he was trying to get funding from jp morgan mm -hmm. jp morgan owns coal mines he owns all, all these the locomotives and the he owns copper <clears throat> and like all the stuff that leads to the what we're using with wires wired electricity everything all the whole thing if this were to become a thing Everybody that has stakes in the coal industry and fossil fuels and all that, They'd lose they all a go shit broke. Ton of money. So, they try to hide all this stuff. Same thing with when Graham You're Hancock right. is discovering the this literal technology that exposes this, like infinite clean 
energy, wireless electricity, and they Free shun energy. everything that he's because he's essentially you're inadvertently putting... exposing all this stuff. And then not only you're right, it's those people that have made billions, almost mm -hmm. no trillions mm -hmm. of dollars in coal, in fossil fuels, mm -hmm. in oil. Exactly. And they're like, uh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, because we want to make money. Because we they have so much fucking money but they want more mm -hmm. it's so weird and it's, they're like we control like yeah, it's fucking, control that's yeah, the thing. yeah we control everything that is a basic necessity mm -hmm. in this on the fucking planet bro exactly and then they're like if you start using free energy or like what was his name hitchcock no, uh, it's Graham Hancock. Hancock. Hitchcock is a director. <laughs> Hancock. Everything he's saying, he's like, we can do this. And they're like, well, no, because we're not going to have more money in our pockets. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have our hands in different things. So, like, exactly. please shut the fuck up. Yeah. And, like, that's the same thing with Tesla. Like, no wonder why his shit was stolen. Because they were like, oh, my God, he figured it out. Exactly. Be be because he figured it out, they stole mm -hmm. his shit. And I was like, oh, because Tesla said this one quote where he's like, if you want to understand the universe, think of frequency... And it, uh, what frequencies vibrations and energy yeah mm -hmm. and when i read that i was like no tesla knew something else it makes so much sense because <clears throat> this this whole thing goes into massive it, topics yeah like it, it, it it's such an expand expansive mm -hmm. sort of like when you get into the pyramids you start talking about electricity and then you start talking about energy and then it keeps fucking mm -hmm. going and then you also realize that these societies were psychedelic bearing societies that integrated them into their culture psychedelic like, meaning like what do you mean like, like well i know for the egyptians it was the blue water lily that was a psychedelic of their choice oh. all every single ancient civilization has some sort of psychedelic tie whether it's mushrooms whether it's ayahuasca Marijuana. whether it's marijuana whether it's lsd oh, or godamine so you're saying that with those psychedelics like these sort of i guess revelations kind of happened maybe i think that could be a huge thing no there's some oh i personally I saying. personally <clears throat> i've had experiences on psychedelics yeah, I've done where crack. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i haven't done anything but personally i've had experiences where like i make insane realizations about myself about the world reality how it works and there is some oh, sort of underbearing, whether it's a dimension of frequency, there's something more to this reality that you understand when you're on psychedelics. And I think oh, yeah. these civilizations through hundreds of thousands of years of being oh, yeah, like uninhib too. Yeah, uninhibited psychedelic use and expansion when it comes to almost like a tranquil society where you don't have that control. Where there isn't somebody saying like, no, you can't discover this because it'll ruin what I have going. When you allow that to happen, you could have, say, almost a utopian society that is just all of a sudden wiped out by asteroids. And then people find what they had they, and rebuild. Yeah. But not also it's like these trillion dollar fucking corporations and people, they love having almost the whole population depend on them exactly we have all the petrol you need mm -hmm. we have all the copper you need we you need mm -hmm. coal hit me up <laughs> yeah like, exactly get my DMs. it's like no that's so dumb like well uh, monopoly that's what it is exactly it's like it's they love being the ones that have provide everything essentially mm -hmm. no don't be self-sufficient fucking depend on us exactly it's, it's a lot harder to be self-sufficient, so why even try? Just mm -hmm. depend on us. They also, like, it, it's so much bigger than that, but it's also, like, a one-track mind sort of thing. Life is this way. Life is black and white. Yeah. But then how you... But, like, you were saying about these ancient civilizations with these psychedelics. They're like, wait, hold the fuck up. There's this book that I was reading called The Four Agreements, and it talked about Ooh, yeah. the Toltec. Yeah, yeah. Which were, like, a... I told you about this. Like, I think so. I <laughs> it's, remember like, the first saying... time I came yeah. in. I was like, you gotta read this, Gavin. But, like, he was... The author was talking about um, like smoke and mirrors kind of, but mm. he was talking about the veil. Oh shit, I'm trying to remember how he used it. Mm, it's the like veil. The... this veil in front of everyone and you're in, oh man, I can't believe I'm forgetting, but it was like- I know what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the outside dream. That's what it's called. Uh, the outside yes, yes, yes. dream. You have a veil over you, 
that is that dream. Yes. Of illusion. Of life is this way. Life is 3D. No, life is 2D. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's like I get I sometimes get bothered when people are like life is meaningless. I'm like, what? Yeah, like, like I get it. But I'm like. Life would not have such complexity and intricacy if it was not complex. Yeah. Like life is so unique. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just fucking think about like, I don't know, man. I just think about the life has purpose. It's not just meaningless. We're not here. Exactly. We're not a hum. We're not humdrum void vessels. We're so much more than that. And it was like, you dream with the, you dream with a veil covering your eyes, kind of. Like, that's the best way I can describe mm -hmm. it. So you're not aware of these things. You're like, oh, it's this, 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 yeah, and that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But then you wake up, and you're in, you're not a part of that dream anymore, and that thick veil is lifted, and you're like, wait, I see a lot of shit. Exactly. Because there's so many more properties to this reality that we just don't understand. And because it's like... Have you seen The Matrix, that guys? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So just, well, how could you believe in that? You're you are like, what I mean? Hmm? But also, yeah. I think it's like... What I'm so fascinated with is, like, I, with psychedelics, they're fascinating. Especially very, psilocybin. Very. And what they, um, the stories that I've heard and what people have experienced, I'm like, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to say it, but through my own practice of meditation and just being still, I have those moments. Yes. And yes, caffeine it's very is also possible. caffeine is also a stimulant. Mm -hmm. So there's something about when I drink coffee, I'm like, oh my god, I'm realizing yeah. so many things. It's like I already go on these tangents alone in mm -hmm. my room, and I'm like, zzz, zzz, like pacing back. I'm not crazy, guys. Pacing back and forth, mm -hmm. and just not no, that's a lie. Just going over random things and just these all sorts of shit coming up, and I'm like, well, what about this? Well, what about that? It's like I have those moments on my own without the influence of those things, yeah. but. It's so interesting what people come up with. And like now that you mentioned like a lot of these ancient ancient civilizations have had access to these psychedelics and they're like, holy fuck. And I'm like For hundreds of thousands yeah, of years. Yeah, even indigenous tribes. Yeah, like, like think about ayahuasca. Think about us, like living in America, like yeah, in the sixties or it was nineteen seventy. Movement or the flower power movement. Yeah, and then in the seventies they completely made Absolute Ow. bans on psychedelics. Schedule mm. one of psilocybin, LSD, and you have DMT, like, ayahuasca. The biggest, like, okay, you can you you know the bands that were doing that. You know the Beatles mm. were doing that. Mm -hmm. You know the Doors were doing that. Jimi Hendrix, Dude, Janice. The Beatles are com two completely different bands before LSD and after LSD. Yeah, I mean, like you listen to like their um, a hard day's night, and you're like, oh, mm. this is so cute. It's been a hard, mm. and it's like a, it's like a. You're, you know what, you're right. It is. It's like very, not posh, like the way that they presented themselves, very posh and like, yeah. we're from Liverpool, yeah, <laughs> like right? Scouse, whatever, I don't know. But then after, like the, like, I'd say like 1969, 1968, mm -hmm. they're like, we're the Beatles. So, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hello. Like, there's a song called like, I am the walrus. Yeah, and I fucking love that song it. Is so, Yellow Submarine. We all, you're like, where the fuck did I come where up with that? Where did this come from? And exactly. Like, you're right, honestly. It's like, yeah. Janis Joplin has always been like, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix too. Fucking genius. Oh yeah, Jimi Hendrix did so much acid. I mean, <laughs> He's like, yay. The amount of people, I mean, the Beatles are literally like one of the most Everybody massive knows they did influences <laughs> when it comes to just music, like modern music. Like We, dude mainstream music samples off of so many other songs mm -hmm. especially going way back to that time dude for real and then you look at like say i'm like make something Pink different Floyd, bro the grateful oh. dead where like they oh, made right. music in tune for with that. fucking acid like it was meant <laughs> like to go along with it yeah like the song breathe by pink floyd breathe oh breathe my lord dude well i just recently listened to that and that's I was like, where oh. i got my love of music honestly was from doing acid and listening to the dark side of the moon you're like oh an awakening it's wow that's fascinating because i i had done acid before and you know acid's cool i always thought of it as like oh yeah it's a fun fun drug experience but yeah. like there was just one time i was with my ex-girlfriend at the time mm -hmm. and we both did acid and i was like you know what i'm just i'm just gonna listen to music because whenever i listen to music 
is different. It's next level. And so yeah. I'm like, okay. Wow. Everybody talks about the dark side of the moon. It's like everybody You're says. Like, What's the hype? <laughs> yeah, you've never listened to Pink Floyd until you've listened to Dark Side of the Moon on acid. I'm like, okay. So I, <laughs> I'm tripping balls. I'm at the peak. <laughs> and I put on this album and bro. Breathe comes it on. It was <laughs> a full body experience. Whoa. I've never had, like I literally from the emotions felt in my body, the way my body felt felt was my acid understanding like in like a tablet form or was it like yeah. on the tongue i took a tab usually you, oh yeah. so it fucking dissolved into every system it was like mm-hmm. yeah. it was in your digestive system it's, and it's like it's insane because that's literally it went to everything it's the in most you. potent drug i think wow one, i'm almost imaginable because like so with say psilocybin you could take one gram of dried mushrooms and that would give you a pretty solid trip with a tab of acid you're taking it's like a taking a vitamin. micrograms. So you're taking 0. 0.00001 gram. Is that a lot? No. It is tiny. Oh, that's it what It is you a mean by fraction potent. of what you think it would be. Like so small and it's still insanely potent. You take a tab wow. and for 12 hours, you are not yourself. I mean, you're yourself, but it's different. It's literally like, the most insane experience ever. It's crazy like... I mean, wow. It just dissolves in your body and it goes mm-hmm. to everything. And the re- it, Especially your wild. brain's like, hey. <laughs> yeah, because it, it fits into your serotonin receptor. It fits more perfectly into a serotonin receptor than serotonin. So it essentially gets stuck in your receptors <clears throat> and slowly dissolves for 12 hours, which is why it lasts so long. But that's how it works. It's weird. It like inter- wow. It's able to interface with our brains somehow. And it's like, hey. And I it's know insane. This. <laughs> Like, you, we are tripping, and the room is breathing, everything is alive, and then music is a full body Did you ever go, did you go outside, and we're like, the trees can talk? I've been outside. On mushrooms, I've had conversations with trees without having to speak. What have they said? It's, like, it's more like, a, was it like, just in your mind, like an internal dialogue or mm-hmm. an internal conversation? Essentially. They're like, like we've been I here. went on a float. I was on, a, like, a float raft trip, and so I'm floating. Oh my god, I can't wait to hear. And I took, like, a gram, and... The way it, like, so we're going down the stream and all the trees are growing over the stream. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, whoa, like I'm seeing the symbiosis, the ecosystem that is literally built right in front of me. And then I'm seeing the trees kind of acknowledge me, like they acknowledge were that I'm there. At you. Yeah, in a way, like they knew that I was there and they understood that I could now understand that they were there. I don't know how to describe it. No, it's that weird. makes, I no like I ex- God, I don't want to sound like I can do that without drugs. Like, I, yeah, I no, genuinely I know what you're can't. Saying, yeah. No, it's like being meditating, just fucking meditating yes. and truly learning what it is to be in the present moment and to understand that everything is alive mm-hmm. and everything is one, a mm-hmm. part of this bigger thing. I like, I look at trees and I know when the trees are like, I know you're here. Exactly. I just look at them and it's almost like they're back. They're like turning their head and they're like, it's good to see you. And I'm like, it's good to see you too. I'm I'm a fucking tree hugger. I don't care. Mm, I'm like come here. Me too. I hug trees, and it's like, I don't I don't know, man. It's like I know that they're there, and I know, that's I don't know. That makes sense. You get it. Mm-hmm. You get it. Same thing of how I feel with psilocybin. This is where it really came through together with me was when I started growing psilocybin. Yeah, like it pulled through. I yeah. mean, I never <clears throat> grew psilocybin, mm-hmm. um, but so, <laughs> uh, but so. I've always been fascinated with mycology. Like, I've always tried to study psilocybin and mycelium and how it works. Mycelial fucking networks underground. It's insane. It is probably the most intelligent that. being, in my opinion, it's the most intelligent being to ever grace the face of the earth. It Mycelium is mother nature. It takes rock and breaks it down into soil. Oh it my interacts God. with every plant and is able to transfer nutrients between each other. Plants are able to communicate via mycelium. It's literally an intelligent in like it is it's, intelligence. It's conscious. I don't it's... know how to because you you think of like, oh, it needs to be one person. One this one being is intelligent. But no, it's a hive mind. I don't know how to describe it. It's stranger it, things. Mycelium in <laughs> itself kidding. is it's mother nature. Like the earth Sorry, is I'm almost sure. alive in the way <laughs> no. yeah. where I see it. And and then <clears throat> when you grow mushrooms and you see the process of how it works, and then all of a sudden you have these little fruiting bodies which are just tissue. It's just created tissue out of the mycelium. It's created a fruiting body, 
with spores. And then when you eat that, when you ingest the properties that are flowing within the mycelium, you're able to interact with its consciousness. And that's how I've always felt. Whenever I'm on mushrooms, especially high amounts of mushrooms, Jeez. I'm interfacing with whatever mushroom intelligence, whatever that consciousness is, it's taking me in like a child and being but like- But it also observes you. It knows me better than I know myself. It takes Isn't me in. Isn't that interesting? And it's, it's like- It's looking at you like, oh, you're experiencing this. Exactly. Like and it's I've, like, you yeah. need to feel this right now. Look at this. That, look oh at my, this. That's what I've heard. Like people are like, it was just talking to me. And I, and I was like, it sounds like it looks within you and anything that's buried or anything that's you haven't acknowledged, it's like, I know you're not acknowledging It this. understands you more than you could ever understand yourself on a multi-dimensional level. Like we, we interact with the world on this third dimension and we think that everything is tied to this and we don't really focus on it's so our mental and how bigger. important it is and how much of an effect it has. But they Especially can see on perspective all too. of it. They see all the bullshit and they just show you. Now, still, Simon's like, your perspective's very linear. Yes. Don't make it linear. Just make it <sighs> as... That's fascinating. And also, it's like how... I love how you said it's like a hive mind. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people... Nothing is separate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they think that, oh, this higher power is a, is above me. In the sense of... It's at a different level, yeah, mm -hmm. but nothing is ever above or below you. It's always beside you. Exactly. And it's like this, you think the universe, oh, I just made this. It's such, <laughs> I have, like, my, the biggest question that I have is mm -hmm. how, like, let's just, let me just get God. Let's, mm -hmm. Let me just say that. How did God become self-aware? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is that? What yeah. is it? Like, what the fuck? I asked my mom that, and she's like, whoa. And I was like, mom, what is God? Like this. How did yes. God become self-aware? What is source? Dude, what is it? I, that's the thing. Like, for me, and my understanding of how I've developed you throughout this the, world. Real, sorry. I'm no, you're, sorry good, you're, you're good. You're good. Like, you think the universe has just created a few things? No. The universe. The has, fact that it's, it's ever expand, It's constantly expanding. <sighs> that it's fucking infinite. Mm -hmm. It keeps going. Dude, it's insane. Like, for me, the I complexities. believe that the universe itself is God, in a way. We're... Oh, yeah. When I mean universe, not space. I mean, mm -hmm. like, like there's so many different names, like God or Source or mm -hmm. the universe. I don't know. Because, yeah, people, source, maybe. people, I mean, like, a lot of people, because of predetermined religions, kind of try to fit God into this box of, like, this person. You are this. You like, are... it's this you are a human. God is everything. This one person or thing or creature that controls everything. But no, like, if you think of that controlling everything itself, just the act of everything. Do you? Being oh. the God, that's what I kind of see Ooh, it as. I get, so, you you know I mean? oh, wait, so you're saying like, God creates these things, but these things that are created have a mind of their own. And they In operate way, based yeah. off of their own. I will operate this way. Yeah, and I, God's I think like, like you, I made you, but you do with the way people describe it. Kind of the way people describe <clears throat> it is that we are all God, yes, because we are all that. of this one create. Uh -huh. Whatever this creation is, we're all of it. Yeah, we're, we're all not one separate. in one in another, and yeah. we're all living each other's different lives that we will eventually live at a different point. And then also, it's like interact like you would like there's no coincidence i met you i met ryan i met your mom exactly your family Everything happens this for fucking a reason. podcast it's like this conversation is it was meant to happen mm -hmm. and what i'm learning from you and what maybe you're learning from me exactly, it's like yeah it's all like there's like this theory i forgot what it's called it's like a single thread and we're all just on the same thread but there's different loops of wherever oh yeah at, like I string think. is a string theory i think it might have been I think that was mm -hmm. it, but I be I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. I've heard like, oh, we are all God because we're all one of the same thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, essentially. And that's what a lot of people say. Like when people have extreme psilocybin trips, <clears throat> like five grams like, and above, went... they come back and they go, I was oh, here. like I get it. I remember now. We're all God. <gasps> I'm God. Whoa, we're all one. Dude. Like I remember everything now. And I'm just in, I have that veil over me they're like it's gone mm -hmm. no veil i'm not dreaming anymore i'm exactly. here but it's weird because as soon as you come back when you sober and come back 
you're like, you lose that touch. I know where I am now. Like you, well, like you, un- you remember, but you can't interface in the same way. So you're, oh, it's like that's one plane of existence. You come back and you're like, I'm back on this plane of existence, mm-hmm. but I'm not there. Yeah, like I'm, st- wow. I'm still there, but it's like I a can't state of mind. understand the fact that I'm there. Like, so I had this crazy idea with my dad the other day. <clears throat> And so there's this concept called the muse. And the idea is that your brain is an antenna for ideas. And that I I... was just talking. Really? No, Gavin, I was talking to my mom about it this morning. Really? That's cool. No, I'm not kidding. I said, mom, the muse is like, the muse feels like a child, but she also feels like a woman. She like, Mm. for me, my muse is feminine because Mm. I'm like, I told her, I was like, my muse is blue. She's like this deep blue to me. And anytime she's around, she's like rocking in her chair, and I'm like, oh, that I know. is so cool. Like she's she she's the fuel for my poetry yes, and for my song lyrics. Exactly. That's so fucking funny you brought this up. And I was like, the muse is cheeky. I'm like, she's mischievous, ma, because she shows up and she's like, when are you gonna write? And I'm like, yes. I don't know. I was waiting for you. She was like, I'm here the whole time. And I'm like, well, let's write. And she's like, okay, take it easy though. She goes, how about write about this? And I'm like. Dude, you're right you're right it's such that, an insane concept and so i was expanding on that with my dad there's a reason why that's why you said it's at 100, 100. 111 or whatever one there it one. is there it fucking is like so i had this idea and so somebody you are a genius i saw this concept on tiktok and it was the fact that there's no such thing as privacy if the fourth dimension exists the reason being so that is funny let's use this chessboard right for an example yeah put this piece on the chessboard this chessboard is 2d don't, don't even worry about the fact that they're raising it. This chessboard's 2D. There was a person, a 2D person that was on this chessboard. Mm-hmm. And this was a box. They would have no idea that this pawn is inside the box. Because they can't see it. Because all four sides of their dimension are blocking it. Okay. So they would think, okay, so I have this pawn in here. Mm-hmm. It's untouchable. But us, as a third dimensional being, can take that pawn out of that box without them ever even knowing that it was touched or manipulated. So mm. if you take us as three-dimensional beings okay. with our brains that f- form these thoughts and consciousness which we don't understand if say there was a fourth dimensional being i.e kind of the muse idea couldn't they interact and plant things in our brain that we can't understand yes and they're put there you're able they're inter- are able to interact with our consciousness stream without us understanding that they're doing it you said the brain's like an antenna mm-hmm and so they're able to transmit that signal and you don't even know it. These ideas that come in, you're like, oh yeah, I'm smart. I came up with this idea, but I, it's really something manipulating your pathway. Okay. That's so funny you said that. When people are like, how do you sing so well? I'm like, I don't take credit for it. Yeah, yeah I sing. right. Yeah, I exactly. don't take credit. I'm like, this. it's voice is mine. Yeah, I get it. I am creative, but I don't just come up with this. I'm like, like people are like, what's your process? And I'm like, you, I tell them like a a very basic answer Mm -hmm. because I don't want to like, so this is what I say. I'm like, oh, I just like it. I don't have a process. I just do whatever I feel. So I Mm -hmm. sit and I wait and I'm like, okay, I want to write about this. But truly I'm like, I I call the, like my nickname for the universe or source or God is Habibi, which is just my Mm -hmm. love. And I'm like, Habibi, let's write. Or I'm like the muse. I'm like, okay, muse. I was like, I know you're here. I'm like, just what do I write? How should I write this? It's, it's and fully I sit trust. And I trust source everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I know we're going to write together. Or like even like Archangel Gabriel, mm-hmm. like the story of how mm-hmm. he's the messenger of God, but then also he has a hand in a lot of creation when it comes to poetry and Whoa! songwriters. That's the thing. Like all these religions, like I think every single religion. I'm like Gabriel, write with me. Is Gabriel's like, off- okay of like an understanding that came from our brains are the 20,000 years ago when you had these civilizations that understood all this they were able to figure out what all this means all these crazy ideas and concepts that we're forming i was having a lot of revelations today i gotta tell you about one after okay okay yeah but like i feel like a lot of religion is these old civilizations that understood everything were wiped out and then people just had to retell what they knew back then and through like thousands of years of oral tradition it develops into archangel archangel what was his name gabriel archangel gabriel Mm -hmm. we understood maybe the muse back then and then it slowly became this person because that's the only way that you can fully remember it and tell Uh, it where it makes sense as a story yeah 
It's like, I don't, it, it, but that's like the fact that you brought up, there's this thing called the muse. I was like, oh my God, he got it. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> what the fuck? It's like, that's how I write. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just channeling it, man. Exactly. Like, and when I meditate, I'm like, Habibi, I want to write something. I'm like, write with me. And like, I talked to my dad too. I'm like, dad, write with me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoever wants, to, I'm like, Habibi, just write with me. But then not only that, I remember talking to this, she's an energy reader. And she like got into like past lives as well, which I think is super sick. Mm. I found out a few about I found out a few about mine, and I'm like, oh, okay. oh it makes sense. But I was asking her a question. I was like, well, what about why do I feel like I've known these authors like in a past life? I said I brought up Oscar Wilde, and then I brought up Edgar Allan Poe. Like mm-hmm. if whoever listens to this podcast, if you yeah. don't know Oscar Wilde, he oh my god, he's the funniest. I first read Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest, which is a satirical play. Mm, and it was so, okay. it's a comedy. It was so fucking funny. And I read it as like a junior. Or a, no, I read it as a junior. And as soon as I read that, I was like, I feel like I know you. Uh. I was like, why do I feel like I know Oscar Wilde? And I make the joke like, so what happened with Oscar Wilde is that he had an affair with this 22 year old boy. Mm, he was 39 okay. or 38. And this young boy was going to, I think, Oxford or Cambridge. And um, in the 1800s, and obviously homosexuality was mm-hmm. illegal. Yeah. So Oscar Wilde was found out. And then Lord Alfred Douglas, I think was his name, mm-hmm. who was the guy he had an affair with, didn't show up to Oscar Wilde's court um, hearing. And so Oscar Wilde was uh, taken to goal i think that's how you say it. it's g-o-a-l and there he wrote the reading of goal which is his experience being locked up essentially wow, okay. so anyways i make the joke like i was probably defending oscar wilde in court like let him be gay and I'm like, <laughs> he's my best friend <laughs> and so like i felt this affinity for oscar wilde mm. same thing with with edgar Allan poe and i remember i would read the raven annabelle lee um He, it, like, there's this one one quote that Edgar Allan Poe has where he's like, we loved with a love that was more than love or something like that. Mm. And then, like, you know, the, like, nevermore, nevermore, yeah. nevermore. Mm-hmm. Um, Annabelle Lee was, like, one of my favorites. I had not experienced intense grief when I first read Edgar Allan Poe. Hmm. But when I would read his work, I'm like, I know. I'm like, how do uh... I know? I don't know any. I felt an affinity for Edgar Allan Poe. So I asked her, I was like, why do I feel something for them? Why do I feel like I knew them? Mm-hmm. And she goes, well, there's like, she got into like my birth chart and everything and then their birth charts. And I shared similar signs with them. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Edgar Allan Poe and Oscar Wilde wrote about things that no one else wrote about at that time. Cause you know, the, you read sonnets and everything was like, oh, I love you. Mm-hmm. But like Edgar Allan Poe was writing about his own depression yeah which you didn't hear uh-huh. and then he wrote about grief and then he wrote about his uh, his opium he was so high on opium the yeah. whole time mm-hmm. <clears throat> but edgar Allan poe had his own sort of problems and he wrote about them mm. and oscar wilde would write about his homosexuality but then wrote about society in a comical way because he's like they're this fucking weird or like they're this yeah you know what i mean and so i asked her that and she goes well even though they have passed there, they still have a hand in a lot of creativity. And I was talking to my mom about this. And I was like, she was saying that people who are writers who are alive and who are poets or just like they write novels or whatever, their energy. So like Oscar Wilde, Edgar Allan Poe, their energy is still present. Mm, So they still have a hand. They're a part of that mind. Mm. So I'm like, mom, I just realized something. I know why I read certain poets at certain times. And she goes, okay, well, why? And I went, when I'm trying to write poetry about grief, I read Edgar Allan Poe. Mm. And I'm like, all right, Edgar, talk to me. And then Edgar's like, well, read this poem that I wrote. And I'm like, okay, Edgar. Yeah. And not like literally, I'm like, no, oh my God, Edgar. You, it's like, theory, whatever. I'm like, I look through Edgar's like stories. And I'm like, what do I want? What can I read from you to help me write? So I read something and then I write a poem about grief. Mm. When my dad died, I was reading a lot of... I wasn't reading a lot of Poe, but I understood him even more. Yeah. And I felt like whatever I read from him when I first got into him, it was like whispering. That muse that was mm. like, hey, remember Edgar? Yeah. Edgar wrote about this. You, you, you know how to write about it. And then when I wanted to write about pleasurable experiences or being happy, being alone, I would read Oscar Wilde. 
because Oscar was like, just drink wine and have fun. And I'm like, that's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> and then like Pablo Neruda, who's like one of my other favorites. It's like, he wrote about love, but passionate love. Yeah. Interesting. When I felt so fucking nuts with being fascinated by someone or mm -hmm. liking a guy, I'd read Pablo Neruda. Mm. And when I would read him, I'm like, you get me. I'm like, okay, let's yeah. fucking write. And like, when you mention the muse, I'm like, they feel like they're a part of that too. I don't know, man. That's insane. It's it's just such a crazy concept to me because it resonates. Like, it works. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Like, <sighs> I literally can't explain it. Like, it's just something. I'm probably doing it a disservice by trying to explain it. It's, it's like, don't even try and explain it. You me. just have to trust. It's You just have to, it's, yeah. Especially with, like, certain artists that I listen to as well. Mm -hmm. It's all energy. Like, even, like, there's, even the artists that I listen to that are living, there's something about that interaction between mm -hmm. myself and their music. It's the energy behind it. It's the muse. I don't know, man. It's insane. It's wild. Because, like, I have this constant realization where, like, everything that I'm doing is so much bigger than me. Like, I'm the one doing it. You're but just, the force behind me is a divine energy that I cannot explain. That's like, how I feel. It's like, I'm not... Yeah, you know what? That's where I'm at, I mean? too. It's like, maybe we're going to be pivotal for people after us. Oh, we are. Like, They're I already like, know at, it. Look at Vino. Like, look at what he did. That's the or thing. Like, is like, it's Gabriella. weird. We're not there yet. But I, we're getting I there. feel it already happened. That's the thing. Time is so weird. Is I just know we're on this timeline. No, I get it. It's already happened. I'm just living out the experience of doing it for the That's first like time. That's like the law of attraction. Like what mm. you know. So it's like my mom like raised all of us, like my siblings and I just like once we, she would explain it to us and it was up to us whether we wanted to follow it or not. Yeah. And she's like, whatever you follow, just know that. I don't know, but. Like, I, I was really into the law of attraction, and it's like, well, what you desire, you have. But then also, it's like, with what you desire, act as, live as if you already have it. Mm. So then I was like, oh, okay. It's that same thing. I want to be a singer-songwriter. I want to be a poet. I have achieved that. Now I'm just living out that story. Exactly. Like. Wow. Yeah, it's like living as if it has happened because it has happened. Yes. When it comes to time and then the universe and divine timing, mm -hmm. oh, it has happened. Because in the eyes of the divine, it already happened. There is exactly. no time. But here, constricted by time, we're like, oh, it's taking forever. The reason why I'm <laughs> like, like with Reno, that happened. Mm. And I was like, I want to open for someone at one point. I wrote that down and it happened. And it mm. feels like it happened like that. And then I wrote down an intention to do a podcast a while ago and it happened. Like I'm experiencing mm -hmm. it right now. And you're like, didn't I write that like six months ago? Yeah. Well, the past doesn't exist anymore. It happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's already happening. Exactly. And I'm like, huh? Dude, I don't know. Life it's is crazy. fucking weird, man. All mm -hmm. I know is that... It's fun. <laughs> we're on a crazy path. Like it's literally all trust. Like at this point in my life, it's all just trusting that... I have this path mm -hmm. and I'm on it. I've already made it to the end goal. I just need to do it right here, right now. Exactly. And I have to trust that this, this is the right thing. Like there's a lot of times where like, cause I've had a lot of existential dread about like death and stuff like that Me? when I was younger. <laughs> but at this point in my life, it's just like, I have to trust that I'm here to do what I was supposed to do. And I have to trust that the universe is going to allow me to do that. Existential dread about death. That's, why are you describing me? I'm like, <laughs> Stop, you're reading me to death right now. I've had so many, especially after experiencing grief. Mm, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to die. It's like a, a reminder of mortality. Or just, it's a reminder of time on earth. Yes. As a being. Or like as a human exactly. being. Or as a creative being. Mm -hmm. So... There were so many moments towards the end of 2022 and half of 2000, no, half, the end of 2021, half of 2022, most of it. Mm -hmm. I was so scared of dying, mm. but I had, I know we all die because that's just a life. Yeah. But I was like, I don't want to die because someone did. And I was mm -hmm. like, I already didn't want to die. Now uh, I don't even want yeah. to more. Because you've seen the, the effect that it's had and it kind of makes it really real for you like but it's thrown in your face not only that i saw it 
Like, literally, Um, I saw my dad's body. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's death. I don't like that. It's... I don't even know, man. Dude, and... I lived with that dread of, fuck, fuck, fuck. I felt Mm -hmm. like I had to do everything immediately. I was like, I want to fall in love. I want to have kids. I I need to live my entire life in this moment. (laughs) Yeah, and so I was like, I don't don't want to die. I don't want anyone else to die. Mm -hmm. No one die. And I was like, (laughs) I don't want to die. What was so interesting is I wanted to die because I wanted to see my dad, but then I didn't want to die because I wanted to live still. Mm. So I was like, I want to die it's kind of like i don't want to live a life without you yeah the only way i can mm-hmm. live with you is if i die mm-hmm. but then i still want to live yeah so i was like fuck i want to experience everything immediately i want to have as many experiences as i can so i can die and see him mm. and i was like let's rush it now oh i see <clears throat> but then wow i got out of that and accepted it my aunt was like I'm, she goes, I know this might be hard to hear, but there is love and there is loss and you're going to experience it multiple times. Mm-hmm. And even it's not like someone physically dying, it's loving someone or liking someone for a certain amount of time and then it goes away. Honey, that, yeah. that is a different sort of grief. That is a sort of loss because mm-hmm. you can't have that person. Exactly. And so that dread was so heavy, dude. I was like, fuck, I, I can't live knowing that I'm going to die. Now I'm like... I'm going to at one point, yeah. but I'm going to live because I know I have some, exactly. I know I'm going to live and everything that I want to do, I am going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then when wow. time comes, peace. Yeah, <laughs> peace out, that. guys. That's beautiful. That dread was so heavy, dude. Definitely, God, it man. was, that was like the most <clears throat> like mm. triggering thing mm. was death. I was like, I don't want to die. That was, yeah, because that's something that I've, fuck, I was probably like 12, 13 when I and realized, it's like. It's so funny, like, how young you were. Like, your mind yeah, was already expanding. Like, all of a sudden, it's like. It's accelerated. You're like, like you're, fuck, I'm going to die. <laughs> I, I saw this one really cool TikTok, and it was like, when all of a sudden you spawn into reality. And it's like, these kids playing, like, doing whatever. I was 12 And then and just 13. all of a sudden, just. And then this dude's like, what the fuck? Why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like that idea of like it's, you're okay, on it's autopilot. It's your fucking crystal, Gavin. Is it? Because you, I, the conversation that we're having right now, I had with my mom this morning. Wow. And I said I was twelve or thirteen. Mm-hmm. I feel like at different ages in our lives, we have certain moments of awakening, just random. Yeah, weird like 12, awakening. There's something about being twelve. Yeah, where you're like, <gasps> reality, what the fuck? Like you kind of start formulating like, oh wait, like there's something bigger than this. Whoa. Like, like, I started talking about frequency when I was, like, 13. Really? Yeah. That's like, crazy. I was into... I got into ambient music when I was 13. That's super and cool. And there was this one... I was explaining it to my friend, and I was like, what if there are certain frequencies that make us peaceful, but other frequencies that make us uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. Like horror movies. Why we feel so nervous. But yes. when we listen to, like, a song like this, it was called Orange Ocean by mm-hmm. Kodomo or something mm-hmm. like that. And it was, like, a remix of it. And it was just like... Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it right now, but I was like, versus this, which makes me feel calm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is, is that a thing? And she, my friend was like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. And I was like, oh. It's, it's, it's just those moments insane, where you're like, man. Wait a minute. And then it all ties in, like the whole idea of frequencies. We're just like, ex- extensional. Like there's a reason why I fell in love with music and I realized Same this is here. my life passion. <clears throat> and then it... <clears throat> aligns with the universe everything is vibrating at a specific frequency and you're able to interact and change things you're able to manipulate your idea of reality and then like actually make it happen oh my god i and that goes back to like how you were saying about water as well Mm -hmm. and how things were built over water Mm -hmm. so have you heard like um like, I've, there's this book called, like, The Secret of Water or The Language of Water or something. Mm, I haven't heard and about it. And it was, like, they would put water, I think, over a speaker or, like, a bowl <gasps> Dude, or something. I was sure. And they would say oh words. Oh, my God. Yeah? Oh, I no. Okay, so I saw... Whoa. So I saw this social media account where they focus specifically on showing the properties of vibration. And then when it was interacts it on, with was water... It salt? Oh no. Well yeah, first starts yeah, yeah, with salt yeah, yeah. where you vibrate the salt and then it forms 
different a patterns. Yeah. When you do it with water, bro, it's it certain... forms literally psychedelic trip visuals. Well, does it? Oh shit! Like that's the thing. Wow. The way it vibrates, the way it looks. Is it also cl- like a crystal, like a crystalline structure? Too? Yes. Like it has these formulations and structures that it makes, and you're like, when I see it, under I'm a like, microscope. I, oh yeah, when I see it, I'm like, that's mushrooms. Like that's a that's a psychedelic trip. So it's kind of like there's it's like sacred geometry kind of. Yeah, it's, it's like definitely like I think it. I think what a lot of what when I see that it makes me think like oh I think what psychedelic a lot of psychedelic visuals are is you're all of a sudden just your perception of the vibrations and how they interact with say even the water molecules in your well, eyes. We have a lot of water like, in us, yeah. anyways. And then even the Whoa. atmosphere and then just how things work like you're kind of interfacing and you're able to see how the frequencies and vibrations interact with your everything. reality on another plane that's not visible here you know what i mean that's so funny yeah and it was like certain words that you'd say certain phrases so if you'd say i hate you the water would appear like distorted Mm -hmm. like i guess i don't know how they did it i think they put in like a bowl or something and Mm -hmm. then they'd say in like a microphone and be like i hate you and then the water would be distorted but then Mm -hmm. when they'd say i love you the water would be so beautiful it's like Mm. it was like those geometric patterns yeah beautiful complex and unified exactly but when you'd say something like i hate you or like like curse words as well Mm -hmm. it's like i think it has less to do with the words too and more of the intention that's set with the what you're everything has intentions man the intention that you put behind something can either be very beneficial or very harmful like, when I listen to certain music, I can't listen to certain songs because it's like, I don't feel this is not resonating with my own frequency, yes. my own vibration. But when I listen to other things, it does. Mm. And that's like, even with me, I'm very careful with what I write and with what I sing. Mm-hmm. Because that's the thing. You can feel, like, you can listen to music Especially from 100 way, years ago yeah. and feel what they were trying to get across. Yeah. Even if you don't... That's why, like, listening to music where you don't even... It's in a different language. You can't understand the language, but mm-hmm. you understand what they're conveying. It's the feeling. Maybe not to the T of, like, oh, he's talking about this person, but it's the, well, understanding what they're trying to Even melody convey. is frequency. Melody is its own yeah. language. Exactly. Like, like, I understand some Spanish, and when I listen mm-hmm. to music in Spanish, if there's something about it that I... Like, flamenco. Like, I don't know <sighs> everything music. that they're saying, but I'm like, fuck. The way it, like... It's enlightening. It's so passionate, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, Gitanas, it's, like, southern region of Spain mm-hmm. where they're, um... Like, when I first heard flamenco and I saw flamenco, I, she was singing and then there were dancers. I cried. I had no idea what she was saying. Yeah. They're, like, she's telling a story. And I was, like, I know she is, but it's out of pain. And they were, like, mm. well, yeah, she's singing about, like, losing someone or, like, a love... Like, she, wow. the man she loved didn't love her back. And I was, mm. like... <laughs> I'm like it was in a restaurant too, so I was like, <laughs> the waiters were like, "Do you want Sprite?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> please." <laughs> but no, and it's like, I don't know. There's just something about like the what I don't know. I'm very conscious of that. Like we're very aware of it. So yes. I don't know. It's like when I make music, I make sure that it's not at a specific frequency, and that even when I talk or even when I sing, mm-hmm. the way I make my voice sound and the words that I use or the words yeah. that I write can have tremendous effects either way. Yes. I just choose to make wow. it out of light and love. Yeah. Because if I go one way, it's I feel it. I feel the difference between mm-hmm. my intent. Like when I make, like when I said I've seen your soul, I've been inside. It's too deep to let go. I'm saying like, I could make so many songs being mad, and being hateful. Mm-hmm. But what is that going to do? Yeah. I'm just going to attract more hateful experiences. Mm. I can feel that. I can feel like oh fuck. But then when I make songs, out of that compassion, yeah, it's different. It's something. I learn more I learn more out of being, oh I'm so mad at you. Oh I'm so you've hurt me. And I learn a lot out of you've hurt me but I still love you. Mm. It's like it's you learn both ways, but my intent always is to kind of I don't know, be loving, even if I'm mm, upset. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean it shines in your personality. It shines really. in the way that you <clears throat> affect a room. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the way when you can walk into a room and just change the energy. Hey. It's 
different. It's the way <laughs> you hold the way your intention with just life. And your intention with even like, if it's what, subconscious. Yeah, you're right. Like you, you don't actively think about it, but you just are. You it just you, is. You are that's being. how. And that's the thing that I'm trying to really do now, and like start mm. doing a lot more is being very intentional with everything that I do. Mm -hmm. Whenever I make music, whenever I go on a run in the morning, whenever I wake up in the morning, like do it with positive intention to try and that's what better I do myself. As well. Yeah, and it's and it's so human to also wow that's gonna mike's gonna pick that up <sighs> crack Should crank that volume up. <laughs> <laughs> Just asmr cracking my back is cracking for the pod <laughs> 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 no but you're so right it's like oh shit i forgot what i was gonna say <clears throat> intention yeah um that have to do with subconscious no hang on it's almost there it's like on the tip of the brain yeah it's it's in the it's in i forgot the part frontal cortex i don't know i failed science <laughs> 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 i know um with positive intention oh i remember okay it's like that can easily be lost as well like co constantly positive 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 you know yeah but it's like you forget mm -hmm. to be human oh yeah and you forget you can there's nothing wrong with being feeling negative or feeling mm. annoyed or anything. I don't know. It's like when you said that, I was like, I'm finally at a point where I can feel those things, but not take it personally and yes. still operate in like a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. There's so much shit that's, ha I can be so mad right now. Mm -hmm. Be like, well, my fucking dad died. Mm -hmm. Like the guy that I liked, like it didn't work out. And I don't know where we are right now. It's like, mm -hmm. I could so easily be mad about it. And like, I felt hurt out of both and I felt pain and I mm -hmm. felt yearning. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I'm like, why? I could, I could easily be like, well, why me? I'm mm, going to live my life. I'm mm, going to live the rest of my life yeah. asking why me and pitying myself, pitying my family and the mm -hmm. fucking everything. Yeah. I could hold on to grief and pain and use it as an excuse for the rest of my life to get out of things that I don't want to be in. Yeah. But then also to use it as an excuse for being, reacting in shitty ways. Or in a shitty way. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes. That's one thing that I hate that I always do. Is like yeah. subconsciously you'll make an excuse for like why you're upset. Or like why you have a shitty interaction with someone. Yeah. But then now I'm like... It's like wake with that positive sort of... I can feel that pain. I can feel that longing for someone. Because both experiences is grief in a different way. Mm -hmm. Grief for the first time is losing a parent. And then the second time is losing somebody that I can still, that is still alive, mm. but that I yearn for because I want them so bad physically. It's, you know, it's like yeah. similar, but I could be mad about it and be like, oh, fuck this. You know what I mean? Like life sucks. Mm -hmm. Life is not happening. Life is happening to me, not with me. Ah, uh, interesting. But when you're like, I just, with a positive attitude, there's so much that I gained out of both exactly and i and i and i hurt and i was sad but then i saw both and i was like this has made me more loving mm. like my the perfect way of explaining it it's like after my dad i was like now i have so much more love to give wow and i'm gonna keep giving interesting like i gave i had i have so much love for my dad still and he gave me so much love in my family i got and they were like there's this quote that's like the reason why you grieve the like losing the reason why you grieve and the loss of someone is so heavy is because your love doesn't have another place to go oh wow interesting so when my dad died i was like now i have extra love mm. and then with the guy that i'm like <laughs> like me not like me but i'm like i wanted to work out yeah now i just i gave him my affection i gave him my love in a not in like i'm in love with you it's more of like in a I love you as a whole because I just love mm. everyone. Like I love everybody wholly for who they are and their flaws yeah. and their baggage. I'm like, yeah. I love you anyways. And it's like, from that experience, I got even more love. Wow. And I'm like, I'm just going to wow. give it. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know exactly it's what like, you're saying. I, yeah. It's so much, it's more fulfilling than having that. Well, life doesn't happen with me. Life is not beside me. Everything is above me. 
and I'm below everything above me. No, everything mm. is beside you. Everything is with you and in you and for you. Yeah. I feel like that's something that not very yeah. many people understand nowadays. Like that's now a huge struggle that a mm -hmm. lot of people in our society deal with and never yeah. figure out. And that's a sad thing. Yeah, it's I probably would have never figured it out if my dad died. Mm. That whole experience was to be where I am now. Yeah. It sucks, but I'm like, nah, it's all right. Yeah. I've accepted it. Wow. <laughs> like flexed in case the camera's off. Wow. Fucking. This is an important podcast. <laughs> this is an important potty. Is... <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Cause I know, I mean like the, I'm sure the camera's not even on. I'm sure the footage, the footage itself doesn't look good. I'm sure it's not very easy to ingest the information. Oh yeah. But I guarantee you a year down the line, two years down the line, there are going to be so many people that come back to the first podcast with Gavin and Gabriella <laughs> and then come to Gavin find Gab. the knowledge from years prior. That's going to be like, what if we're like, I'm like 28, like we're 30 or whatever. And I'm like, Hey, you're, and like, we come back and we listen to it. Exactly. And we're like, we're so exactly that's so crazy that's why that's, I'm so excited that's why i like to do all this shit is i like to give the perspective of a young adult like mm -hmm. i understand i say a lot of these things and i give a lot of <clears throat> advice i guess and it's not very much like you should listen to this i i'm just giving my perspective so am i from, from where i'm at what i've lived through and hopefully someday somebody can listen to that and gain some sort of understanding whether you're somebody younger than me or somebody in my shoes who are understanding oh shit it's normal to be really fucking confused about everything that's happening. <laughs> and it's, yeah, but it's like, oh, fuck, I had a point. Oh, it's no. It's gone. Fuck. I'm thinking of potato soup. <laughs> 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 um, no, it's like our generation, like, this is cliche, too. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be like, oh, great. They're... Our generation truly is misunderstood because of what older generations see how we mm, present ourselves mm -hmm. in just school yes they think they base us as a person around how we act in school i'm like that's fucking school right you can't fully be yourself in school exactly because it's just everyone's trying to figure themselves out and they're scared mm -hmm. but it's like this this episode or just this podcast in general can give that generation a deeper understanding like we're just as complex as you were exactly we were just as confused as you guys were mm -hmm. but our generation is different because we talk about it and we exactly. want to talk about it and not mm -hmm. only that we're like well you did this when you were a teenager we're not going to do that mm -hmm. we're not going to go this route and we're very self-aware very much but we so. don't know what to do with it so you guys can just i don't know man like you guys can talk about it because you'll find the answer eventually. Exactly. In the conversation. I don't know. I really don't know. Wow. Gabriella, <laughs> this has been an amazing podcast. Yes. Thank you for being the first guest to come on. Of course. I really appreciate it Thank so much. Thank you for much. having me. This was very enlightening. I'm, yeah. Like you said, we're going to come back to this years from now and be like, We're probably going to figure other things out, too. Oh, coming definitely. Back to it, yeah. I mean, we're going to have however many hundreds of podcasts <laughs> in the time. It's going to be so funny. But this yeah. is a landmark one. This is the Woo! first one. So 10 out of 10. Thank you guys, everybody, for listening. If you've gotten this far, I hope there's some insight. Um, understand that you're going to be okay. Yeah. Everything's going to be all right. Don't take everything seriously. Life always happens for you. You're going to end up understanding that and seeing exactly. that when you're meant to. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. As long as you trust in the process, mm -hmm. you're going to get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. I love you. This has been Vino's Void. Have an amazing rest of your day. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. Stay chill. Stay chill. Stay chill. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Adios. that's so good. Peace out.